What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Game Over Greggy Show. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Hi, guys. Hey, how you doing? I'm just trying to figure out why Colin's hiding uh, his, like... I'm just putting my hand Superman's there. Just hand. stretching my arm out. Look at look at these these fucking works of art. Stroke it. Colin, these, you... These killing machines. You've been killing it lately on I'll the tell you what, machine. And Thanks. the Luberderm. Thanks. Over oh. here, this is the pride of Long Island, Colin Mario, yeah. of course. Look at how soft his skin is. Touch it. I mean, can I touch your skin? You think, like... Wow! I feel my hands. My hands are fucking. Yeah, that's, I, that's I work at the dock. Sandpaper. I work at the dock. You, you might as well. I mean? You might as well be that guy from fucking Kickboxer. I put the crates years. on the ferry and I take them off the ferry. I do whatever I, I need. I got the there. black lung pop. <laughs> you got the black lung. You've been working here for one day. <laughs> <laughs> you have your hand over. You got the. It's like uh, remember in the old Adam West Batman when he put his hand on the bus, then pull it back, and there'd be the red button, and hit the red button, and the so doors dope. open, and they slide down. Become ba, 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 Batman, ba, ba, Robin. Ba, ba. Uh, no pure one. Tim Gettys today. No, Tim is uh, Tim is down in L.A. visiting in some friends. Los Angeles. We gave him a little vacation, a little time Los off. Angeles. Los Angeles. Uh, but he'll be back next week. Yeah. So he thinks. So he thinks. Yeah. Big things for next week. Did we week. vote on him, us firing him yet? No, that's not the big thing. Oh, okay. If you're if you're listening to this and you're watching this and you're doing this thing before, or what did I put it on the schedule for? Monday? I don't know. We're at GDC all next week. We're doing live Exciting. streams over on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. 11... A.M. to 5 p.m. each and every day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, yeah. Getting the whole thing done before we go to PAX. Yeah, yeah, While we're there, what we're going to be doing, this helps out the Patreon listeners, is that we will be doing the Game Over Greggy show and the Kind of Funny Games cast during the streams. Mm. So if you've ever wondered what anarchy leads up to the show yeah. and follows the show afterwards and what we try to bleep out but won't be available to bleep out next week, you get to see because we'll be doing the streams or doing interviews with like Cliffy B, seeing new games, seeing Steve Gaynor, doing all these crazy things with these developers that are big deals. Mm-hmm. And then in the middle of them, doing our regular shows that will then break out later on as you, you've come to expect if you can't catch a live stream. I'm excited about this. You, you, you told me this idea and I said no. No, you didn't. Just right you had, no, like, you, That's you, a terrible you, idea. You all just kept t- typing at your computers and didn't really acknowledge the idea. And then I, I pushed forward to it, and then I confirmed again today. Yeah, you, <laughs> this you is really today. happening, everyone. Um, and you know, there's there's a part of my, my brain that's like, well, we should probably go look at that space to make sure all the stuff that we're promising is even close to possible. But then it's, it's a like, room. You know what? It's a room you can live stream, and that's all we need to know. That's all we need to know. It'll be fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put together a little sheet that I send out to all our guests, mm-hmm. explaining where we're at. Get there a little bit early, and also things are gonna go wrong. Yeah. But we're this is this is the new age. You embrace that and you don't worry about it. It is the new. You're age. gonna come in. You're gonna sit down. You're gonna start talking to Colin and I, maybe Tim, Nick, whoever. We're gonna start setting up your game a few feet away. And if it's not working immediately, don't panic. We're gonna sit here and talk. We're gonna chat. Mm. We're gonna what talk we about the ghost. Okay. Hey, bada bing, bada boom. Hey, bada gong, bada goose. That was Die Hard. He just quoted Die Hard. I know. I did, and you just quoted uh, just being incredibly racist against my Italian heritage. Um, mm. is that not right, Colin? Did I did I hear that correctly? Greg yeah, no, you being, heard it. I mean, you're being a Greg dirty. is a full blown racist. He is a racist. So I'm not gonna worry about it. So you guys put on your wife beaters, gold chains, and make some sauce. Come at me, yeah, do do. I'm making a sauce. Ah, bada bing, bada boom, ah. I'm making a sauce. I saw Don John, Don John. That Don was John. it, right? I know, I know what happens. I, I saw Tony Danza. My favorite thing about one of my favorite things about The Sopranos, one of the most understated things, was when they would go to. They would be in the back room of the Bing, where like they had the their, bottom Bing. They had like they had like a bang. they had like a. Actually, no, no. They would be in the, this. All right, so at this place, they would be in the back room of the deli. That they they would hang out like the sandwich shop, right? And they had like their own kitchen and like a bed and stuff like that. And they would just be all be hanging out there. And there was always, always like one of the maid men or like one of the associates just always cooking a sausage oh, at the stove. Always, like always, constantly, yeah. someone was just cooking sausages all the time. And now that for I with five you, or that's six, true. Years. that's yeah. real. That oh yeah, I cook. I'm gonna have sausage right after this. Yeah. And what's what's You're funny about that? On set, uh, Thursday. Yep, I am. Oh no, and your sausages are amazing, by the way. I think Thank you get you. them at Andronico's. They're they're great. Oh, they're great. They're worth the they're worth the, the the pound of flesh that you have to pay to fucking get them because so, it's at Andronico's. Oh, I thought you meant like and- Andronico's is it was a metaphorically a little more expensive than Safeway, and Colin acts like they are charging him teeth. <laughs> it's literally, outrageous. Literally, the last time we went to go there when we were still driving home uh, at nights through the show, Colin was like, "No, no, I refuse to go in there. I refuse to go." In. He like sat in the car. But it, it happens the same way it always happens, where you go in there, you're like, oh, this is too expensive. And then you try to go away, and then you're you're like, you know what, it's quality, though. Yeah, I go there I go there quality. pretty often. Now, now you're getting all your meats there. You won't yeah, get I, get my, I get my meats there. They have some good breads. Uh, but when I get, when I get like I'm a... I'm a big fan of. When, when you get anything else, like a grocery, what I would consider a grocery. So let's say like some uh, some cookies, some salsa. Um, Granola. Granola. Like everything's more expensive. Like their orange juice is like six or seven. Are, are you nuts? You know what I mean? The meat's a good price. Mm-hmm. But when you get like these kind of more, like you need Tropicana orange juice, so you have to get like, 
I don't know, Campbell's baked beans or something like that. Like it's always like literally fifty percent more than it is. That's else. the big name. Tax. It's absurd. That's, you're, that's, you're trying the, to buy that's the big just name. this city though, man. Everywhere I go in the city, I feel like it's way too expensive. Everything's too expensive. It is. But if you walk the Safeway down at like a uh, like Noriega, then it's totally fine. You know? I, I've it's rediscovered my walk. love for Safeway lately. And my wife and I go to get to go to Safeway when we need a specialty item. They don't sell it like the real that, foods or like the Marina Market mm-hmm. or any of these like smaller. Uh, grocery stores that that sell just kind of the bare necessities for out- sure. outrageous prices. So the other day she was like, "I want to get for the Oscars. We were watching the Academy Awards." And um, what's that like at your house? Big deal? It's a pretty. It's a not a big deal. Did you but guys we, put on your, you put on your. We your, wore tuxedos, yeah. both of us, my wife and I. She wore a tuxedo as well. She wore a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> well, hers was more like a white dinner jacket. Um, but no, we watched. It. We 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 like to make a little bit of a big deal out of it. Well, she's dieting this week, so normally we have what she refers to as her Doritos time. Where she has her is that she, based on the award winning? No, she what's made? funny is Doritos, it's totally Doritos, completely Doritos, different. Doritos, but she's Doritos, like, Doritos. I want Doritos. I want to pour a big bowl of Doritos in front of me and just and she slow plays it all day. She'll just eat like mm-hmm. one after the other after the other, and we'll whittle through like a whole family size bag. Sure. Uh, but this this week she was like, No, I'm going on this like crazy protein diet. I gotta cut down a little bit. The cool ranch Doritos. We've been trying to work out. We've been going back to yoga together. So um, yoga. I got so she ate uh, a nice fillet of fish. With I think some spinach. For the record, not a fillet of fish from McDonald's. No. Okay. No, not a fillet. Not a fillet. O fish. Okay. Thank you. A fillet uh, of a fish. Okay, it sounded okay. like oh, did that you hear no in there? I, when everyone says fillet of fish, you often I, you just assume it's McDonald's. McDonald's fish fillet. Otherwise, no. She the Grandma uh, Miller special that and a cup of coffee. That's all my grandma would get there. Damn. Did you, damn. I could just smell the polyester. Um, <laughs> she was eating a nice fillet of fish and some spinach, and I was uh, whittling my way through Taco Bell because that's what I give myself on Oscar Sunday. Because to me, Oscar Sunday is like the the nerd Super Bowl, right? Sure. Where it's like it is the time that I get to celebrate the thing that I love. And I liked the Super Bowl. We had fun at the Super Bowl party together, thrown by Mr. Tyroot and Craig Barron on. That was cool. Um, but this is not. I, like, I was there too. I don't know why you. I said we. To Colin. No, you. No, no, you no, gestured you, I got at Colin, the, made eye contact. And you well, because back. Colin actually talked to me. All you did was sit over yeah, the there. There was two were, sides of the room. You were basically just on your phone. And I'll tell you what, Charles, to Charles, you in the Charles' new girlfriend was there in the center, and since she was in the center, I never talked to her either. That was the cutoff. Didn't ever you know, meet her. You know, Did never meet this woman. I was in the room. This was Greg I, at the Super Bowl party. No, it was actually this was me at the Super Bowl because I was I was listening to the ad blitz halftime. Yeah, trying to catch our commercial. Yeah. Um. Yeah, what's funny about Charles's new girlfriend is she seems very, very sweet, very, very uh, nice, and very, very innocent. And for some reason, I know I wasn't even drunk, I was saying some of the worst possible things directed, like, not at to her, but just I was like, I'm like, dude, that guy is going to – you remember the guy made that game-winning catch where it was, like, randomly yeah, yeah. in your – I was like, oh, my God, he just totally saved the game from them. I was like, that dude's going to go out, and he's going to get laid tonight. Am I right? Am I right? And she's like, I don't know you. Why are you touching me? <laughs> Nick Scarpino Why are you that saying these things? Yeah, she knows me now. Yeah. Um, if Charles is just sitting there shaking I just went off on a ridiculous tangent. Oh, Safeway. So, yeah, so we go to Safeway to get these things. She wanted Diet Coke. She wanted Diet Cream Soda. So we go there, and I'm just—I marvel at how cheap everything is. I'm like, I, why do I forget about Safeway? You can go and you can get normal priced items there that are a reasonable I, quality. I feel like Trader Joe's is cheaper than Safeway. It is, but they don't have—they don't have everything. Everything's Trader Joe's branded. Yeah, so that's like, the big I don't, problem. Uh, what I need to sell Diet Coke for Christ's sake? Yeah, like they don't sell golden. Coke. They don't sell like I can't get Hellman's. I can't get Heinz ketchup. I can't get and it's uh, because they're like deli the, cheese you know? trader joe's the fancy version of aldi right and they're owned by the same company yeah exactly yeah because cheryl when she was interning in pittsburgh when she was getting her phd loved aldi and that's like an even cheaper aldi yeah it's super it's like it's cheap and budget. not like healthy yeah. food stuff no 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 um like so crazy chief puffs yeah like I, I cheryl and i typically go to trader joe's like once a week and then we go to safeway for supplemental things like you're yeah. saying yeah me too because there's just some bullshit at tra- trader joe's that i just don't want any part of like their yogurt <laughs> situation's kind of weak i think i have the Chibani, I think, don't they? Oh, he hates Chibani. He can't. Oh, Chibani's gross. Gr- Gr- Greg's weird. Chibani smells like fucking shit. I don't know. If, I, I don't know. Like, I, I just want to be straight up honest with you. There's something like you're eating some. <laughs> I think it might not be food. No, like I, I think you like might have accidentally like, be eating chemicals or something like that, or no, just garbage, straight no. garbage out of a landfill. See, this is the one you were talking today on Colin and Greg Live about being finicky. Mm. This is the new one where all of a sudden you are on, you are six months pregnant level of just weird mm-hmm. with food stuff. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you can't smell the yogurt. Well, it's only because the yogurt's too much for me. Because it's like you weren't eating this until last month. So, no. like, yogurt? Yeah, you, I wasn't that. around you eating. The, you, you weren't were around me. Sure, I ate it every day at IGN. I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, day, in the house. Big bowl of so now, I mean, in Brazil. this is the problem, and this is the problem with the yogurt situation, is that he eats the yogurt, and that's fine. Eat what you want. I'm going to give a fine fuck what you eat. But 
It's fine. The but then the bowl is there with covered in remnants of the yogurt, which smell like shit, which then goes into the sink and just sits there all day, which smells yeah. like shit. It gets crusty. The cup goes into the recycling bin, which smells like shit. Mm-hmm. And then the aluminum foil then goes in the garbage, which smells like shit. So no matter where you go, you open the garbage can and you get a waft of whatever the hell it is that you're eating. <laughs> yogurt. Greek yogurt. <laughs> See, the problem is it's the Greek. It's terrible. It's, it's the terrible. Greek yogurt. If you get a Yo Play yogurt, that's oh, no, I eat Yo normal. Yogurt. I eat Yo Play yogurt. Yogurt. That's the thing is he eats yogurt by the barrel. That's that his treat. That just After he like has candy. a nice dinner, he eats a thing of Yo Play with nuts in it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's a good. Weird, Yo Play smells dessert. like Yo Play smells like nothing. You, I think not this a, yogurt smells like nothing. It's not it's not a weird Wait, what? Kevin, weigh in. Does the yogurt smell weird? Okay. Go, go get go, go get in the one garbage. <laughs> Just go and smell the garbage. No, I don't think that's an accurate representation. Go smell Here's the garbage. Here's what you're not saying. First off, of course, I wash the bowl when I make my lunch later on. It doesn't sit there all day. Like it sits there sometimes for three or four days. Okay. I'll wash out the containers then when I throw it away too. I didn't know that was a problem. You don't you don't express yourself. It's you just because it's a weird. You, you sometimes ball it all up. You no, ball I don't it all ball it up. up. There's just there's some problems that I have that I acknowledge are so astronomically weird. Not, but I'm willing to make these sacrifices for you. The five seconds to wash out the yogurt containers for you. Well, I appreciate that. No problem. You. I don't see. I don't think it's weird. I think the fact that it's Greek yogurt is what makes it smell weird to you. When I started eating, I I, I went on a binge where I was like, I'm gonna get healthy because yogurt has those those good, uh, I guess bacteria Activias. in it. Yeah. Um, Activia's. It's the Jamie Lee Curtis thing. That's Remember? when that's when it's you have to poop your yogurt. pants. Yeah, it makes yeah. You poop well, your Activia. Pants. Yeah, I'm she old. did it to like and set I've her. Never pooped. I haven't pooped in six months. But it's the same thing. Any right yogurt's now. got the the natural okay. cultures in it. The yes, cultures. the cultures. Thank you. Uh, but the Greek yogurt does smell a little strong, and by strong I mean it does smell a little like a foot. Yeah, it smells like a little bit like shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's just let's just call it like it is. I mean, it, it you know, it just smells a little bit like shit. And great. So I mean, it's not like a full blown shit. I took a fart in the bath in the, in you the took shower. A fart right? in the shower. I took a fart. Now this is you walked it in. No, well, <laughs> come with me. <laughs> fart. Hey, come here. <laughs> took it in. Come the over shower to my. With come me. over to meet my shower. We've expressed <laughs> the, the you know the, the wall fart and you know the, oh, yeah, the, yeah. with the Mori farty. Some people have called it. Uh, That's a really good name. And, That's really good. And it's not one of those. It was one of those that was like maybe there might have been. Yeah. I don't think so, but maybe yeah. I shit myself a little bit. I don't. I'm not positive, yeah. but it sure smelled you, you were like too it. Afraid to look and then I'm trapped in my stall shower. And I'm like, get me out of here! <laughs> like it's too strong even for me. You got the soap in your eyes. Yeah. You're like screaming, banging on the wall. <laughs> oh God! Jesus Christ! It, it it felt like warm in there. Like it was like you got extra warm. Yeah. You're like it's really hot already, <laughs> and I can still feel the temperature differential between the normal hot water and the hot water that just came out of my asshole. That's what you're saying. Yeah, that's what, exactly what I'm saying. It's been a good I show. I could have just said ass. If you I didn't know, ladies asshole. and gentlemen, this is the Game of <laughs> Show. Each and every week, four, sometimes three best friends gather around this table. Each bring a random topic of discussion for your amusement. If you like that, you can pick up the show early each and every Friday over on Patreon.com slash kindoffunny. If you don't want to give us any money, no big deal. You can wait and go to YouTube.com slash kindoffunny. Get each and every topic broken out day by day until we post the whole thing on Friday on iTunes and, of course, YouTube. Dot com kind of funny.com has everything you need including we need to now we need a shirt on district lines that says the more what is it more farty more farty yeah. more farty can it just be a picture of a shower stall and it says more farty it's all some steams coming it out can be it? that i was thinking just the actual like translucent glass with just your butthole pressed up against it like your ass pressed up against but it. then you have to have the arms pressed against the other side yeah. of the shower, you really got to get if you don't have ex- uh, suction it's like it's like opening the airlock on a spaceship you need to have <laughs> you gotta, a, an absolute it's gotta be vacuum like, tight yeah you know what I mean? Yep. It's a yep. weird I know what you're show. talking about. It's a weird show. <laughs> Let's get it on track. I'm going to start th- this week. Okay. Uh, if you're wondering at home, First we have four everything. topics, of course, because somebody's sending one to Patreon.com. We'll get to that later. Uh, I want to start with something. I was out of town on Friday. Okay. I had to go to Canada. Yeah. Didn't have to go. Wanted you to go. You chose to go for a charity event. This charity event. One played there. Game & Watch Live. You can still catch it at twitch.tv slash Game & Watch Live. Uh, raised a whole bunch of money with a whole bunch of other people Good. for the uh, British Columbia Children's Hospital. No, it was just you. It was just you. Just me, pretty much. That's what they said. $10 million you raised for just that. I think it was like 8000 That's what it came up to. Okay. Um, But... Raised all this money playing Mario Kart 64. While I was in the while I was in transit on Friday, though, they announced what and they showed. I guess they didn't announce mm-hmm. it. They showed Aquaman. Yeah, from Batman v Superman. Yes, everyone knows Aquaman. Aquaman. Everyone knows I'm the biggest DC Comics fan on the internet. Right. I say that all the time. Don't believe me? I have this it's, and it's, that. That's Supergirl, right? I hate you. <laughs> Signed by Babs Tar, and you're going to insult me that way. Uh, no, big fan, of course, of the DC Comics. And it got me thinking. First off, I want to know your reaction, Nick, because I know you're a movies guy. Colin, your reaction to Aquaman, Jason Momoa here, how, what he's going to look like. And then I want to talk a little bit about the DC Cinematic Universe in general. 
Nick, you begin. I haven't talked to you at all or heard any of this. Well, obviously, I mean, we've gone back. We've talked about this a lot. There, Zack Snyder's trying to do what Joss Whedon did with the with the Marvel Universe, what Kevin uh, Feige is doing with the Marvel Universe, and I hope it works. I want it to work. I, I mean, I've said this before. I like the Marvel Universe better. I like Batman the best. Like, Batman is my favorite superhero. Sure. But I like the Marvel Universe better, and the reason I like it is because I'm a very fair weather fan. They're doing better projects. They're doing projects. cool stuff. They're doing cool stuff. Yeah. And like I don't give a shit about Iron Man. I never did, but I like Iron Man movies because guess what? They're good and they're entertaining. Um, and Robert Downey Jr. They got Robert Downey Jr. They're interesting casting choices, interesting stories, great, great uh, special effects, and just overall around great popcorn flicks. Um, so I want Justice League to be better than Avengers. I I don't think it will be because um, you want them to keep out doing each other. Yes, one hundred percent. Like competition breeds excellence, right? So like all these guys, and, and right now you better you better know that Zack Snyder has a damn chip on his shoulder after Man of Steel. It was a decent movie, but it was so, so, so... Uh, mixed review? Well, it was a mixed review, but everyone... After that first trailer, you're like, this is going to be the best movie ever made. Sure, yeah, yeah. That trailer made me cry, for Christ's sake. So imagine my you know surprise when I got to the end of the movie, and I was like, huh, I should have liked that more. I liked it. Yeah. But that I should have liked it more. Sure. Um, so flash forward now to what he's trying to do with um, Wonder Woman, uh, Aquaman... I guess Martian Manhunter is that good? that's getting a film as well, right? Yeah, but not in this not, not not, of this movie, right? Right. Um, Wait, is he getting his own movie? I th- I, that doesn't sound right. Kevin, can yes, you do a fact check on he that. He is Thank getting his own much. movie. Cyborg. Cyborg. I like I'm, I'm thinking Cyborg. Cyborg. Cyborg? Okay. Okay. He, is, he is getting a movie. I remember that from. from okay. yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. He has but to it, be. John Jones has to be. Jean Jean. Jean Jean. Uh, and it has to be Idris Elba. Jean Jean. Jean Valjean. Yes. Which is crazy because they they stole the character. What did you think of Aquaman? Uh, what do I think of the look what of him think or of, in the general? One image. Not, not, no, not Aquaman. The, the seven for seven. What did it say? Unite the seven. Yeah, unite the seven. Seven, seven, seven planets. Yes. Seven rings of hell. Yeah. Uh, it's Jason Momoa. It looks like, I think the caption I read on, uh, it's the Verge or io9 said, it looks like Cal Drogo. Yeah. Just underwater. With the trident. With the trident. Yeah. And that's Jason Momoa. I mean, the, I, I like the guy. I think he's perfect for, for a Cal Drogo style role. I haven't seen much range come from the guy. Yeah. So we'll see. This is his first time he act- we actually get to see him act. I watched Conan, the Barbarian, the remake for about five minutes before oh, I was no, like, that's bad. If I, you couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch it. I couldn't, well, I couldn't get through it and it wasn't bad. I just, I was, I made the cardinal mistake of, uh, watching it with my wife and my wife mm. makes, takes every bad movie and makes it instantly 50% worse. Cause she actually goes, she why are we watching this? Yeah. That's what Versus me. Too. If she's out of the room and I'm watching it by myself, I'm like, Oh, I guess that was kind of cool, and it just becomes better. Yeah, like I can't watch any of my 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 cheat shows with her. This reminds me of motherfucking Spring Breakers, which you somehow convinced me to watch by saying it was good, Spring tricking break. me. Spring Break. Spring break. 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 No, so I wa- I start this movie, and Christine from the the jump is like, "This looks dumb." And I'm yeah. like, "No, Nick says it's all right. Let's watch it." And we get in, and she's That's like, "This is right. terrible." And I'm like, "Me." Nick says it's like by the time I'm like, "No, this is really bad." I'm like, "Let's turn it off." And then she flipped it. And she's like, "No." We're committed now. Yeah. Now we're going to That's how you get, that's how it becomes good. No, that, no, it did, we did not come back around. Did you get to the part where where James Franco's like, look at all my shit. I got all this shit. And then for like 15 minutes, he's like, I got nunchucks. I got an Uzi. Look at my switchblade. That's all he said. It's like 15 minutes. It's amazing. Uh, No, unlike that, he looks cool. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know how they're going to make an Aquaman cool, a movie cool. Do you see Superman underwater? But are is are they gonna have the majority of the movie be underwater? or Is it gonna have to be him coming no, to the? Come out. He's gonna have to come out and talk to Superman, right? Like at a certain point, if you're if you're going to unite the seven, I'm assuming that's a reference to uh, the Justice League, right? Yeah, or the Seven Seas. What maybe it's his motivation? But yeah, okay. It could also be. It could easily be. Yeah, if they start putting out more, if they put out the Wonder Woman poster and it says unite the seven, then, then you're gonna know sure. it's the the, the seven. Like, were there seven original members of the Justice League? Yeah, or is that what, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's kind of maybe it's a cool double entendre for him. What did you think, Colin? Not being a comic book movie, comic book fan, enjoying the occasional comic book movie, most notably The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, first of all, yes. uh, Kevin, what's the verdict on Martian Manhunter? I, I couldn't find anything saying that it has been officially announced. They've, they didn't announce. I would have sworn that was one of the five it, movies or so. It may happen. May I'll look at the DC movie. Did you you Google the DC movie slate? I could have sworn that was one of the movies in that in that it, slate. It, <sighs> I We're on it, everybody. Don't worry. We'll look it up. I, I, uh, they they announced literally like twenty movies. Exactly. So That's why it's confusing. It's confusing. There has to be a Martian Manhunter. I don't movie think at there has point. to be. Uh, yeah, there is not. There's Batman not. versus Superman, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, J- J- uh, Cyborg, Justice League Part right. One, The Flash, Aquaman, Shazam, Justice League Part Two, Cyborg, Green Lantern. Jesus Christ! No Martian, How did Martian Manhunter. Manhunter not get into that mix of. <laughs> 
He's not a very. I mean, whatever. save it for the sh- save it. There's two parts to this question. I want to know the first part. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, Aquaman to me has always struck me. I don't know a goddamn thing about Aquaman, but he always struck me just aesthetically as a very old superhero that is irrelevant. So it's interesting that like DC has a lot of old superheroes that are irrelevant, and I think that they're trying to make them relevant. I don't mean that as a pejorative, really. They do have a lot of old, they, they completely have the majority irrelevant, of irrelevant. They have like completely oh, fucking okay. irrelevant superheroes. So it's like with the exception of like Batman and a couple other, like Superman maybe, like a couple others. They're trying to make themselves cool, like yeah. uh, Marvel is. Yeah, and I agree with you. Oh, jeez, that I think Batman's my favorite too. I love Batman's the only superhero I really even care about at all. Yeah. like where I'm like, I like Batman. But I know honest, something about Batman. Is it because of Batman or is it because of that he fights? Awesome oh no, villains? I've always well, Batman's villains are some of the best part. But I've always liked Batman, even okay. since I was a very little kid. Like I never read the comics or anything, but starting with '89 Batman, sure. Oh, I, yeah. I, I actually really even love the campy, like weird ones too. Sure. I just they, they have their place, and I, I think Batman's always been relevant to me my entire life, which I thought was weird because nothing else in the superhero realm was relevant to me, but mostly because superheroes were largely irrelevant when we were growing up. They were in the '80s and '90s. No one gave a flying fuck about superheroes, so it's like it, Batman was really no. And I don't mean that I, like I, I know I know exactly what you're saying. You, you know, know, I agree. I agree. That like the they they were not mainstream. They, like yeah, they, they were, were like not. You with were the a nerd of, and you were a closeted nerd, or you were made fun of. With the exception of Batman, like no, who ga- who cared? You know, like no one. So it's like that wasn't something that was injected into me like other things from mm-hmm. our pop culture as kids. As, you know, I'm 30 years old now, so growing up in the '80s and '90s, like there was just whatever GI Joe and sure, sure, whatever sure, the hell we were watching. So watching this adapt and watching DC and Marvel kind of go at each other and I really feel like maybe I'm wrong but I really feel like it started with like X-Men and Spider-Man um, when I was in high school and the then movies, X-Men yeah, started it yeah yeah, and then yeah. and then DC kind of got in on the act and then Marvel kind of went back and then Marvel's obviously been winning this fight for a long time, well, long it's time. Exception, it's bad, it's... with the exception of Batman right which I think are better than any of the Marvel movies I've seen by far and um, I think that like I would prefer that's I understand DC has a slate of movies and therefore must concentrate on making this, this slate of people relevant again mm-hmm. Part of me wishes that they would just narrow it down to two or three people, like maybe Batman, Superman, someone else, and be like, let's really work on Batman. Let's really yeah. work on Superman. Let's not, like, I don't even know who the hell half the people are that you just said. You know what I mean? Like, that's probably the wrong idea. Aquaman falls into that camp for me because he always seemed like an antiquated superhero. That said, I had no idea that they were releasing anything for Aquaman until, the, you know, it was when Alexa from GameSpot was on Colin and Greg Live with us. That was the last Friday. Mm-hmm. And we looked at the picture, and I had no idea that they were doing anything about it. And I'm like, this looks pretty cool. Not in the sense that it's a movie I want to see, because I will probably not see it. But because they did a nice job making Aquaman look entirely not like the Aquaman I see in my yeah. head, which is with the green and the orange and the yellow. With his, He's a white guy with blonde hair, right? Yeah, he's Nate. Exactly. Nate Aaron, Nate Aaron. And like, so now he, he looks like he's like a Pacific Islander. Uh, he's got – what I really thought was cool is that his outfit was kind of seamless. Alex and I were talking about this. His outfit's kind of seamless where he has like tribal-looking tattoos that are actually yeah. the outfit for the most part. Yeah, they look they look like scales. Yeah, it's but really – it's the tattoo. That's cool. Like I was like, yeah, I, whoever they designed to make – or whoever they hired to make that design, uh, pretty ingenious. I don't know if you can do any better than that for Aquaman. You know? Um, and I think that that – unless you want to go in a super campy direction, which is – has its place. I mean, that's what I. That's the way I wanted GI Joe to go when they made the GI Joe movies. I'm like, just have it out of control. <laughs> like, like you know, when they made. I remember talking to Hillary and other people when GI Joe came out in 2009, and everyone's like, well, what do you? You know, this was my superhero movie, and I was like, well, what do you? What do you want out of this? And I was like, I want them to go so all in on old GI Joe that the opening sequence is the Statue of Liberty fight from the GI Joe movie in the 80s, and just recreate that with real people. And if you do something like that, that'd be dope. That would know, be dope. Like, and you just have the colorful Vipers and Cobra Commanders in his blue garb and Destro's in there. Instead of, like, making it all realistic, that's the direction I wanted that to go in. And they've gone with Aquaman, it seems like, in the exact opposite direction, more the direction G.I. Joe went in, which is to make it grounded. Now, here's the thing. That yeah. Now, here's where we springboard off. Okay, let's springboard with me. I saw this, thought it looked really cool. Cool. Started getting getting excited. Were you springboarding there? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, just springboarding. You, oh, you were supposed to There we go. Started getting really excited, right? And then I remember, of course, it's, it's similar to when they revealed Batman mm-hmm. and when they revealed Wonder Woman and when they did the really cool Comic-Con presentation I had to watch on a shaky iPhone because, God forbid, they put this God forbid out. they put that up. God forbid. Only God they wanted, forbid. God forbid. <sighs> so anyways, I saw that and I remember getting super excited then but God, having to temper so cool. my expectations, right? And saying, yeah. well, remember, though, this is the sequel to Man of Steel for all intents and purposes. Mm-hmm. This That was a movie that I didn't walk out going, what an awesome movie. I walked out going, that wasn't what was sold to me in the trailer and like right. this is a different thing and blah, 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 blah. But something interesting happened with the Aquaman. It gets me excited mm-hmm. and I start to feel that way but then I, I, I change my mind. I, 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 I pivot. Right. Aquaman for me now is the line in the sand, if you will, 
it's exhibit I guess D that this is the DC universe. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was I had I was on this podcast, the Quiver podcast about the movie Arrow, not Quivering. Oh. And what was Quivering? Ollie, Ollie's member. Damn. Theo was watching. Anyways, okay. uh, we're having this conversation, and it's the fact that I think Man of Steel misfired for me mm-hmm. based on expectations, and I think it was expectations set by the trailer. Yeah. This inspiring score, the kid in his white shirt with the red towel. The on fact his back. that we haven't seen Superman in forever. Right. And when the last time we did see him, he was such a dismal disappointment. And then you see this trailer, and you're like. This is it. This is redemption. They get it what they're going to do. They get it. And so you come in expecting your traditional Superman story. He's going to be this inspiring guy, all this different stuff. And then instead, you get this sci-fi movie. You get a sci-fi alien movie. Right. You You get a sci-fi alien movie, which isn't bad, but again, on the misfire of expectations. And I went an interesting way with this Man of Steel film. I saw it at a pre-screening through Warner Brothers, saw it on opening night at midnight, and then stopped going to see it said I'm not going to go see this movie anymore. I'm going to I'm going to stew on it. I'm going to think yeah. about it. I'm going to decide what I want to do. When it came to DVD, I I asked aloud to Christine, "Do I want to buy this movie?" She said, "No. You wouldn't ask that question if you wanted to." I said, "Good call. I didn't buy the movie." That's true. And then I kept stewing. And the reason I did this is cuz if you remember Superman Returns, I saw it opening night and then I saw it three times that weekend. I saw it a million other times right. before. Bought the DVDs, watched them, blah blah. And literally Two months into owning the You're DVDs, like, oh. I'm watching the movie and I'm talking to the girlfriend at the time and I'm like, oh, and this is like, watch Kate Bosworth's line delivery here. She's so stilted. Oh, my. And what is, the, and then I was like, oh, my, whoa, I don't like this movie. Yeah. Holy crap. I, don't, I haven't given myself the second to stop and think, do mm-hmm. I like this movie at all? Before the Aquaman stuff comes out, before I go to Canada, I catch the end of Man of Steel on HBO. Mm-hmm. Watch it from, you know, pretty much the midway point. Just the whatever, punch harder right? point. Exactly, which is, it was resonating in my head when we've talked about wh- yeah. why, why Batman resonates and Superman doesn't, right? And picking it up there, being back to pretty much zero expectations, I enjoyed myself. I was like, okay, I still think Henry Cavill looks like an awesome Superman. There's still plenty of problems with the movie, don't get me wrong. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sliding all of that. But like, I've never been one to fall in spoilers. We're t- putting on this, the Man of Steel spoiler. This is now official. Colin and I have established this, if you didn't know. This is for you now. Anytime there's going to be spoilers in one of our shows, we'll tap our hat and say there's a spoiler alert. Okay. And then when you see us tap our head again, our hat, uh, you can know you can come back. So we're doing the Man of Steel spoiler. When what if pe- you forget to tap our head for the whole episode? I won't. finally tap. Well, I won't. You might. Okay. What if I scratch my head right now? <sighs> it's going to be me. I have to tap my head. That doesn't count. That doesn't no. count. That didn't count. I have to t- untap my head. That the you can't. Someone else can't untap the head. The head. It has to be tapped. No. No. It not. <laughs> Ooh, Sorry. Don't. Continue. No. Everybody got all bent out of shape with how many people died in Metropolis. And that oh, Superman would never let that many people die. And da 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 da. And I yeah. thought I thought it was an interesting choice for sure. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But what I come back to all the time, and I've mentioned on this show before, right, is that when I started reading the comic book Invincible, right, mm-hmm. there's scenes in there where Mark is fighting people and getting blown through buildings, and he's saying, "Stop, stop, stop! We're killing all these people yeah. around us." Right. And that was the first time I ever thought about that, even though that wasn't mentioned in the Superman Doomsday fight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That was happening. People were dying. People were getting crushed and all this yeah. stuff. So when we sit here and then want. A grounded superhero film, right? What what did Batman, the Batman Begins or whatever you want to call them, the Nolan Batmans do so well? They grounded Batman, right? They made it realistic. Mm-hmm. That's what they're doing right now still with Man of Steel in the DC Cinematic Universe. And so now having that expectation, I think pulling away from it, I start to get excited about Batman v Superman again. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm, I can legitimately be excited and not have to make excuses for it here and there. And the fact that, yeah... This is an Elseworld tale, right? Like, if it was Superman in his bright reds and bright bright blues that his mom made, he'd be saving everybody and nobody would die and there'd be happy endings for everybody, right? right? But this isn't that. This is supposed to be a modern interpretation of what would happen if these superheroes came to Earth and this started things. This sort of thing started to happen. Yeah, I mean, and we've seen that story already, right? We've seen this yeah, yeah. for the last how many years? 50, 60, something like that? Like, what, 80 now? 80 almost? now, Jesus. We hit 75 a while ago. So, you know, I think everything, I guess like nothing, nothing comes about in a vacuum. Right, so all every time you develop a script or you develop any of these projects, you're clearly looking at what ha- what came before and say, how do we iterate? How do we make it better? Yeah, Zack Snyder looked at it and said, okay, well, Nolan started this amazing world. Let's let's follow suit with it. But I will say that I, you know, to his uh, discredit for Nolan, I think he went a little too far into the real realm with Batman. I think there were some things that I'm like, I don't need every single aspect of this explained. It actually kind of takes away some of the power of Batman and that. Um, you did. You, you told didn't you to forget. I'm you done. With, I'm done with my Man okay. of Steel spoilers. Um, it's my thought process. I'll do what I want. You know. Uh, 
so I mean I think Zack Snyder kind of fell fell prey to that, which which sucks a little bit. Um, but I think it's also that he just gets a bad rap. The, you know the, what I was thinking about the other day, Batman Begins. Mm-hmm. The 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 Joker or not Joker? I'm sorry. Scarecrow, Scarecrow releases yeah. the toxin. It's yeah. coming up to the air. Everyone in the Narrows is going crazy. Yeah. They say over the intercom that people are tearing each other apart. Dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands of people are being killed in the streets of yeah. Batman Begins, but nobody gives Batman well, shit for it. It's the poor people. Well, Batman's different, though, I think. Isn't the expectation of Batman different? The expectation is Batman's not going to kill anyone, but Gotham is way darker than Metropolis. Well, I'm not, I wasn't arguing about Superman killing in Man of Steel. I'm just talking about... And the number of people killed the man. No, see, I don't, it's, uh, the spoiler uh, thing's see, all fucked up. I don't think. I don't think that that's a. Well, I mean, I don't think that's an issue. I mean, that that was a direct uh, correlation to like when everyone was talking about Avengers and what happened at the end of Avengers, right? Where too. a number of people would have died there they, too, but they, they don't mention that. They don't show that. Well, no, they. I mean, there was news reports that came out jokingly that were like, "Hey, we're going to calculate how much devastation was that would actually have cost the city." Yeah, but Santa, again, it's New cost, York, it not like lives. Trillions. Um, you, know, you know what I'm saying, though? Do you understand that? The, I think the, yeah, the but short I don't remember, I don't remember like there being people that died. I don't remember them showing people that died in in Man of Steel. Well, I mean, oh yeah, dude. Really? When the when the terraformer lands and starts sucking up, there's clearly people getting pulled up and slammed. Oh back the wow, okay, I didn't. See, and I that didn't... was the problem people were having with it, as if in Avengers, when Captain America and the Avengers uh, fucking a- evacuate a block, a is like, yeah, yeah, exactly. But we're missing. I think we're missing the major point. Not not uh, you know, I'm a bit of a layman with Superman, but you. C- grounding something like Superman doesn't seem to be possible and so they shouldn't do it unless you want to rewrite the rules of who Mm -hmm. Superman is you know because Superman is inherently not grounded from another fucking planet and he has an unlimited amount of super power so like how can you like Batman made sense to be grounded but with Superman you should probably go in the other direction which is say if you want to make Superman relevant again to a large audience like the Avengers is relevant or whatever then you need to go in a different direction whatever that but means because you can't ground this character it's impossible but I think it is possible and I think that's the whole thing is we can't have it both ways we're saying they have to go in a different direction and they've done the they've done the red and blue very bright right. so the different direction is making it grounded in in trying to build a universe where Batman and him exist yeah but how exist. but will they re like that's the thing I have a huge problem with this Batman versus Superman thing is like you know, and it's not. I love Batman, but it's like Batman's just a normal person. Yeah, but it's it's not going to build off of the Nolan universe. Though. No, I understand that, but like, and they sh- and they. I, I they think it was a huge not. mistake. I, well, I think well, I think it was a mistake to stop the Nolan universe, even if you needed to get someone else to do the movies and not Christopher Nolan himself. Like they should have kept doing those movies. But and I think that that would have been awesome. Those movies are fucking fantastic. They, you know, like yeah. they are fantastic. All three see, of those movies are awesome. They're great, but they they screwed themselves out of doing more because they set Batman up as too human as too much of a frail human being as you know we only we didn't really see him go through that hard of battle but his body's wrecked and his knees are gone except for when he puts that fancy knee brace on that kicks really hard ones. kicks really hard through yeah but that's why you can get robin or nightwing or whatever in, and i thought that that's they what they were doing at they, the end of that movie and they might still but at the same time like let's be perfectly honest batman's batman like there's no substitution for it I don't want to see. But, I don't want to see Jessica Good Levitt be Batman. I want to see Batman. But be what Batman. was the star of Batman? Because of the Nolan Batman's. Because to me, it was not Batman. That was it. The was villain. the that, it was the see, villains and the world. That to me was the was the biggest mistake of that whole series. Was that it was not a those. If you go back, I've said this before on the show. But if you go back and look at Dark Knight, it's not a Batman movie. It's a Joker movie. It's not about Batman. It's about everyone trying to stop the psycho killer. It's it's more like Science of the Lambs, where it's like the main character, the person you're like. Like terrified of and fascinated by is Hannibal Lecter and and Buffalo Bill, Buffalo not, nece- Bill. not necessarily uh, uh, Agent Starling. Um, it puts the lotion in the basket. I remember I sent you that video. The, I was just watching it one day and yeah. I just took a clip of that and just sent it to Nick. Like at like two Con in the morning. Con texts me random clips at two in the morning <laughs> and it's just like boom, I'm falling, falling. Would you have sex with me? I'd have sex with me. But he doesn't say that. And he says the f word. Yeah, you're not censored here. Say whatever you want. Fair enough. Um, but to me, that's see, that's the problem with Superman. Like, I would like for them to somehow establish. I know that there's different continuities and universes, or whatever. Yeah. But they need to redo this character in a, in a way that makes him not a god. the 1930 archetypical superhero. That yeah, like that's godlike because he is, mm-hmm. and that's and that's a huge problem. You know that I really think that's a huge problem for Superman. And, like, why I think people have a hard time relating to him. Because, like, sure. why? Because you have to write stories that somehow make sense. Like, I have no idea how they're going to write Batman versus Superman or whatever and make it have it make any fucking sense. Because ba- Superman should be able to take Batman and just snap him in half and that would be the end of it. You know what I mean? Like, that they don't, they shouldn't exist in the same universe. They can't. But Superman, Batman's useless in Superman's universe. He should be, right? So, they like, do, that's a big problem. They do a, a good problem. job if you watch, like, and this is, this is where I kind of... Uh, 
I would hope that they do a little more research and go back and watch the original Justice League cartoon, right? That's a great way to show how all these characters can exist. You don't necessarily have to have Superman coming in to save the day, although more often than not, that's exactly what happens in the series. But Batman is the I character... Think he gets his ass kicked a lot, actually. No, I guess he does. Um, Batman is the character that figures it out. Batman's the character who's the master strategist. He's and the brains. like when there's 15 things happening, he's sitting up there in the uh, in the Justice League uh, uh, watchtower, watchtower um, figuring out where to send everyone, what's really going on. And Superman is sort of the the broadsword. He's the tank that you send in first, where Batman is like the general behind it. And that's generally how they go. Batman is Batman's just a fascinating character, and he figures out, like I honestly believe in a world, if those two were real, Batman would figure out how to beat Superman 100% of the time. He just would figure it out. Um, that's true hands down if you put those two up against each other he would win what what i'm more fascinated with and spoilers can i spoil it, who cares anymore it's dead okay everything's um, dead you know when you go back and look at the dark knight returns the frank the the iconic frank miller series that's how those two characters should exist together that is a riveting story about how batman it's a batman story it's called the dark knight returns but it's about superman it's about bringing superman back into the fold and making him what he once was so that he can stop the chaos that's happening in the world and stop this like sort of like totalitarian government that the United States has become. Stop Ronald Reagan. Stop Ronald Reagan. But in this in this instance, Ronald Reagan is basically like in this story, uh, uh, Superman has become sort of a tool for the American government is going and fighting our wars for us, which is not what Superman is. And Batman realizes that and they craft Frank Miller crafts this amazing story where like you don't really know why Batman's coming back that much, but he is coming back and he's making this crazy resurgence and he's like gathering an army behind him. And it turns out that the, that you know part of the reason why he's doing that is is to wake Superman up. And like he goes and they have that they have and that's what was so cool about that footage that you saw yeah. from Comic Con. It was it was that was exact that scene where he's in the suit and he's looking up at him, and Superman comes down and they're about ready to fight. And you're like, I know the reason they're fighting isn't a one to one, uh, to see who can win. There's got to be something deeper than that. Batman would not fight Superman unless there is a reason, a very, very profound and important reason for him to put his life in that in that specific spot. And if you go back and read The Dark Knight, and I've already spoiled 90% of it, but please read it anyway, there is a great reason why, and it's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, what I would hope with Aquaman is that it's like Iron Man for me, whereas I did not give you a shit about Iron Man. There was zero expectations. So, uh, me, the bar was set at ground level. Right. And when I came in, I'm like, I, I think that's I want to be blown happen. away. I, I want to be blown away. If they play this right, I think it might actually not do what Spider-Man 3 did and self-fucking-destruct because there's too many storylines. If Because you figure you're introducing Lex, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg. I'm sure I'm leaving someone out. But you have these five characters who are going to be introduced, right? Is Flash right? going to be in this one? No. It, or at least not that we've heard of. Okay. And then four of those five are getting their own movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you can put these people in there a lot, uh, and we and we can just be on Superman's side of like who the fu- what is Aquaman's deal? Who knows? Maybe he pulls in, he comes in, and it's just like uh, X Men: Days of Future's Past, and he's the Quicksilver. Yeah. Who's fucking awesome, and we didn't get a huge backstory on right. We met that his mom. That would be probably ideal. Exactly. Drop all <laughs> these characters in there right. that are fucking rad and beating the shit out of everybody, and then make us want to know more when they're solo movies. Don't bog it down by asking a million questions and trying to explain everything, which is what they're going to do with Wonder Woman. I have a, free, a fear of. I have a fear that they're going to do that too. And the reason the reason why uh, Marvel was so smart was that they they did all the standalone movies First. to build up to it. Yeah. And so by the time we by the time we got to the Avengers, the reason that movie was so powerful is because we already knew these characters, we already loved these characters, yeah. we already seen these characters. We had go two hours their of backstory in each one of them. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they come together. And you can you can just have fun watching them interact. But see, where like when you were a kid, when you were used to play with your toys, and you'd put, uh, you know, the Hulk in the same room as Iron Man and Thor, and like you 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 would be fantasizing about how these characters would interact with each other. We get to see that, which is awesome. Now here's the interesting thing, though, right? I don't are is are is the DC universe cinematic universe supposed to be fun? I don't think it is because when I left Avengers, I don't think smiling they know. ear to ear, I, I had such a great know. time. I think by going grounded, by showing destruction, by doing all these di- th- different things, you're not going for fun necessarily. You're going to try to make these interesting sci-fi movies. Well, you know, I don't, I don't think they know, and I think this is the, I think this is why they're trying to bring Zack Snyder in and have him be, uh, sort of a, a godfather of the series because at the end of the day, you need someone. What, you mean you Nolan need... is the godfather? Oh, I'm sorry, Nolan. Did okay. I say Snyder? Yeah. Well, the, the Nolan Snyder, Snyder connection, I, I guess it's more like Nolan. I mean, um, Snyder's directed the first two films here of this universe. So, I yeah. Mean, he's more than a godfather. But I guess Nolan is, is sort of the one who's executive producing all right. these and he's coming in and he's, you need someone who understands, like you basically, 
you need someone who can come in as sort of showrunner or executive producer that can say, look, I am overlooking this entire universe. Yeah. It is really going to, when, when I'm saying all, we're developing all these stories, what I'm really saying is you're developing these stories in line with my vision for what the whole universe is supposed to be. Yeah. That's what Marvel does so brilliantly with Kevin Feige, uh, Feige over there. He's uh, their lead of development and he is the one that they call in when Disney's like, we're making more movies. He gets final say on what's, what's going on with all of them. So you have to imagine his sort of vibe is fun. Yeah. You know, serious at times, but mostly this is a comic book movie, so it should be fun, and we should have characters that are quippy back and forth to each other and witty back and forth to each other and really fleshed out. They haven't had that opportunity yet because they're a little behind the curve. I don't, but I don't even think that's what they're going to go for. I don't think that's at all. Because, I mean, just think about Avengers. Avengers is saturated color and bright and fun, and you leave excited and happy, and the good guys win. Whereas I feel like the DC Universe is not building that. It's building this ground. But isn't that just sort look of at the, just completely look at the, opposite to where those two, the, how those two comic books uh, companies came up from each other? Like, Marvel was always the one that was known for, like, that we're going to deal with some pretty flawed characters. And DC well, they was always were all, the happy-go-lucky, like Batman and Robin. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, Marvel's yeah. characters were always very humanized, yeah. right? Like, different things. But, I mean, like, just looking at the color palette, of the Aquaman teaser image is like black and white. It looks like you know, and that's what I would describe when I when I think of Man of Steel, having watched it, right, not going into it, but having watched it, right. that is the color palette of it, and that's what that universe looks like. It's going to be moving forward. Yeah, they made they made a conscious choice to make it more serious, and I think that was probably a conscious choice to depart from. Um, you know, they did it with they did it with Superman Returns too. If you go back and look at that, even his outfit is muted tones. Yeah, right. I don't he, like that. You know, I don't like it either. Um, and I think they did it as a as a, they were they were looking probably at the landscape and they're like, what tonally should this movie be? Well, should it be more like the Christopher Reeve Superman, or should it be more like the thing that's some of the highest grossing movies in our catalog, which yeah, was yeah. the Batman movies, which were super dark and kind of fucked up. Like you look at the Joker, you look at Bane, like people are getting their heads snapped. They're in that world, death is a real thing, yeah, yeah. a very very real thing, where Batman has to deal with it, and that makes sense for him not to kill. Um, I will say this though, the um. I don't remember anyone dying specifically or being like straight up murdered in any of the Marvel movies. I'm sure people die. I think Captain America kills people. Coulson. He was killed by a bad guy. I'm oh, talking you're about talking about a good heroes guy. killing? Yeah. I think I think Captain America shoots people, but I don't really remember. I mean, yeah, Iron Man shoots off of rockets and shit all the time. I guess so. Um, that doesn't. That but again, they don't dwell on it. Yeah, they, they don't, don't dwell make it on as it. like a set piece of. Yeah, and wait, Captain America kills people too. He's a soldier. He's yeah. got to be right. Yeah, he's killing the shit out of Nazis. See, I, I, those don't those don't pop into my brain quite as vividly as uh, the one scene, Superman. Yeah. yeah, that last scene, and I think that was just uh, totally they're off a little bit. Hopefully, they can get back on track. All right, I think this is the tone, and I'm accepting of it now. I'm I, interested to see where the tone's good. Goes. The tone's good. The characters are the problem. The tone's not the problem. That's true. And I think that the. The, the more serious and grounded tone is going to be more successful if all things were equal. Mm, but they're not mm, mm. because they don't have characters. That's that's you know good, what I mean? that's 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 the major fucking problem. You know, like they like people really do. Is it the characters as, or is it the actors? Because like I look at not I, look, I don't actors. think it's the actors. But when you say when you say Iron Man, the reason Iron Man was so good was Robert Downey Jr. Sure, but I, someone else could have done that Iron Man. And it's not it's not like not, it's not, not maybe not the quite the way. Cryer. <laughs> yeah, John Cryer could have done Iron Man. Not, not in the same way necessarily. It's just like you would never know because that is the, you're painted now by that being Iron Man. But right. they could have put someone else in that Iron Man movie and been totally fine. It's just a matter of a matter of, and it could have been bad too. I really think it's the it's as someone who's kind of comes from the outside with comic books, it is the identifiability of the characters. That's you true. Know? And true. they don't have like like Batman and Superman are basically it. You know, in terms you don't of think it, Wonder Woman counts. Not for this generation. Maybe, maybe for like a different generation and an older generation. I don't think Wonder. Like I never even. I never heard. I'll be honest with you. Growing up as a kid, and I used to collect like superhero figures and stuff. Yeah. I was in. I was into Marvel for like a little while, like in the mid '90s, because of my brother and I used to collect like the X Men figures and stuff. I don't think I ever heard anyone say the words Wonder Woman until I was at IGN. So, oh, really? so, so like I was in love with Linda Carter. Yeah. So like it was like I never heard, like heard those words amongst my group of nerd friends. Well, we talk about Superman and Batman sure. and whatever X Men and stuff like that. And I think that that's so. Just from the outside, it's like I actually think both these universes are doomed ultimately to implode upon themselves because they're just there's too much shit going on with all these movies and they, and they cannot possibly sustain it. But I think that in terms of excitement level, it makes sense why people are more excited about um, Marvel because of the characters. Because it's not very often that you find a piece of fiction where you're excited about the universe over the characters. I think for some reason what came to my mind the most was The Road, you know, the Cormac McCarthy mm-hmm. one, which is about the, it's not really, it's about them father and son, but it's also about that fucked up world. Right. You know? And I actually think that with DC, it's actually more about those fucked up worlds and the villains. You know, mm-hmm. like Batman himself is not even that interesting. It's just like that, you uni- like that universe is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like the master detective and stuff like that. And it's awesome. 
but it's really the Joker and and all of these his characters that are like like yeah. the people that like her is, are his foils that are I think are even more interesting. So I hope that they're able to to focus on that more because who knows like what the relevance of Aquaman is going to be? Probably not m- very I see, relevant. I, my, my gut tells me not very relevant. I and, and to your point, Greg, I think I hope that they introduce him in such a way that's a little more organic and a little less. We need to explain every single aspect. My 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 big hope is that they don't do sort of the let's go on an adventure sort of movie where it's like uh oh we're at a, we're at an impasse what do we do oh look it's a guy that just came out of the ocean it's aquaman let's talk to him he helps us solve this one little bit maybe we'll recruit him to the team later yeah. um it is hard and they haven't you know with the exception of avengers no one's really done an ensemble cast well so I don't know. Get know. out of here, X Men. The fact no, they, I mean, I, I still stand by the fact that X-Men, those were Wolverine movies. They were Wolverine movies, and he was he was the main character, and everyone else was sort of side characters. X Men Last Stand was probably the best. Days of Future Past wasn't an ensemble cast per se. I mean, you're not seeing the X Men come together. Sure, it was him, uh, Beast, and Professor X, and they were trying to fight the three other different the future. Yeah. Um, like while you said, to, while listening to the Moody Blues record, Days of Future Past. Exactly. Yeah. Um. You know those movies were good, but those were more just cool stories told straightforward about some comic book characters, character or people rather that just have to happen to have these sort of special abilities. Um, yeah, it's it's really hard, and you're right. There's with a DC universe, and especially these characters, Colin. There are there are less degrees of of uh, gradation there with in, in, with the characters. There's less there's less gradient to their to their sort of just uh, the, depth. It just seems to know? be the nature of that universe. I mean, and that's why I think going in that dark and dire and grounded direction is the only smart move to make. You know, like. You can't if they try well, to be I would like, like to see that. Yeah, well, I would, I would to too. And if they try to, if they try to be like Marvel, they will lose. So like you cannot you cannot go in that direction. You will lose. You know what I mean? You will yeah. lose like easily. You have they have nothing on Marvel in terms of in terms of character recognize like in terms of recognizing the characters in terms of fusing the universes together in terms of who's going first and who had the idea originally to do all the shit was was Marvel. You know, so yeah. like DC is playing catch up in all of these different ways. So you have to accept the status quo of these characters and either change who Superman is. Or make it so that he can you could wedge into a more of a Nolan style universe is what these movies should do, and that will differentiate them. And then you have you give the same audience two different things because right. you make this like that, then they're going to compare this and that, and this will lose. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because how can you outdo the Avengers? How can you outdo Guardians of the Galaxy? All these things that people are fucking nuts about. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, I think I really do, and I, I kind of you know looking back on it, I think it was a grave misstep to try to fall. fall. See, I think it, I think it was a misstep to try to fall in line with what Nolan set up. I th- I would have liked, especially since I would I would like to see a Batman movie that would have started this whole thing off that was a lot more fantastical. Oh, not me. Not uh, me. I would have loved to see, not. I don't mean campy. I mean I want to see Batman do the things he does in the animated series. I haven't seen that yet. Have yeah, the animated Clayface series. The animated stuff? series is great. I want to see that. Fight, Clayface. Yeah. Like, see, to character, me, yeah. the DC universe should be more fantastical. It should make sense that Batman and Superman are in the same universe, even though Batman's a dude. He's Batman, so there's something special about him. We can't put our finger on it. Yeah, he trains, whatever. It doesn't matter. He's Batman. We believe that even though he's a normal person, he is really, let's be honest, he's a fucking superhero. Yeah. Like, the guy has superpowers. Sure. I want to see that. I want to see him flipping around in the air. I want to see him making that catch of the vial above the stadium and, you know, the animated series as he's swinging on the rope and tosses it over to Robin. I want to see that sort of, the highfalutin sort of um, fantastic world, and we haven't seen it yet. I don't give a shit that Batman, you know, uh, wears armor. That's cool. You know what's cooler to me? That he never gets shot. Because he's so fast, he comes out of the shadows and just fucks people up and goes right back into the shadows. And you're like, what was that? Was that a wraith? Yeah. yeah. Was that the devil coming to tell the me that devil? I sinned? No, it was the Batman, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I'm waiting for that. I would love to see it. Like, and you know what's funny about that is Zack Snyder directing a Batman movie would have been like that. But maybe maybe that's what this will be. I yeah, we'll see. Yeah, 2016. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm super interested to see. I just, I don't know, man. I just, I don't agree with the sense that the ground, the ground in this is what made those movies special. Like I said, that I think that the campy stuff from the '90s with Batman was great, and the animated series, which I think was a fusion of the two, which, which like of the '89 see, style and the, and the campy mid '90s style, was 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 awesome. It was great, but like Bat, I like Batman for the same reason I like Indiana Jones, which is because like yeah, I wanted the, to be Indiana Jones. Yeah, you can, and you and you felt like you could be Indiana Jones, yeah. or you could be Batman because he's just a dude with means. You can't be Superman. Yeah, but see, I think you know I, I mean, th- like, yeah, but see, I think that real raw aspect fell apart toward the third movie. It worked really well in the second movie, not because it was a Batman movie, but because it had a great villain and a great and, and an interesting, really kind of messed up story. Um, if you go back and watch Batman Begins, he's a lot more. He's a lot more sort of uh, uh, not whimsical is a bad word, but he's a lot less grounded in that movie than he is in Dark Knight. In Dark yes. Knight, all he does is like 
He gets like he gets a cool new armor. He's got the motorcycle. <laughs> you want to be able to turn your head. That was really it's it's spot on these days. Um, I've been working on it. Workshops, a lot of Morgan Freeman workshops I've been going to. It's good. Yeah. Um, but even you know when he does the airlift stuff, I mean that's all very technical, but it wasn't that crazy impressive. Um, and then you it starts to when fall he, apart when, when you he have, sh- when, when he like does the grenade thing through the window, grabs the guy, and airlifts out. That, was that cool. wasn't fantastical to you. That was awesome. It, it was. It was cool. That that was. Those were good parts. It had good moments. I will. Okay, I will say you. that. But it didn't. It didn't have that. I'm quite good. It didn't have the moment where he sort of looks over at the Rachel Dawes character and he's like, you know, he says the stupid line. It's a dumb line, right? It's not who you are. It makes you do. It's what you do that makes you who you are. And she's that's like, that's it. Nailed it. Quote, word for she's word. She's like Bruce, and he jumps. <laughs> you know, he jumps off that balcony and he flies. Right. He does yeah. the Batman sort of like cow spread fly, and you're yeah. like, that's Batman. That's so cool. But then, you know, we brought it back so down to, you know, ground, you know, to zero as far as, like, you know, 100% as far as realism is, is concerned with Dark Knight. That when we get to a character like Bane that is so completely outrageous, you're like, what the shit is happening between yeah, these two characters? Off. And then it's like, Bane can just do anything. And it's like, Batman, like, throw something at the dude. Use an explosive in your belt to blow this guy really? up. Like, I don't do think, something. I don't. I, I don't. Well, this kind of topic will go on forever. So yeah, I was going to say. I was just saying. I don't see. Batman. I don't see how Batman. Or I don't see how Bane is any less or more grounded than Scarecrow or Joker in those movies. Like they're all. Well, I just. just think, they're all just fucking psychopaths. But yeah, but see the logic of the world. What happened was they they kept trying to deal with like logic, logic, logic. Right? We're setting this character up so that he can legitimately do all these things. So we have to. We have to abide by the logic that we're setting up, and it just started to just. Uh, destroy itself as we went into the third movie. Nothing about that movie makes sense. Nothing about it is lo- logical. He breaks his back for Christ's sake. Like he, he's a man that at the beginning of the movie can barely walk, and then by the end of it, he's up and fighting and things like that. And it's like, yes, brother. There's nothing that they told me about Batman that would allow him to do that. Other than he's sure he's got willpower, but at the same time, he broke his freaking back. You know, yeah. Six months in traction in a freaking hole in the ground, <laughs> God knows where, and he comes back and he's good to go. I don't know. All right, Colin. What's yes. your topic? Oof, that was how long we feel like we've been talking for four hours. We were talking for Kevin. You can see it right there. Fifty two minutes. A cup of coffee. Uh, can I get a walk? I love walk? you. Uh my topic is uh God. God. And we've we've touched on religion on Conversation with Colin and on the show several times. Um, but what I want to talk about more succinctly with God, 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 God my is God. Oh my this. God. It's fine. What would uh, so I've been all right, so let me set up the stage for you a little bit. Thank you. I was watching a debate. Between a creationist and uh, an evolutionist. I was listening to you watch that yeah. debate. And one of the things that they brought up was what kind of proof would you need to believe in God? Because the evolutionary scientists, not that all evolutionary scientists are, are mm. atheists, but he was an atheist. Then there are some Catholic, the Catholic Church, for instance, accepts evolution. So it's not, one doesn't necessarily preclude the other. Um, and it got me to thinking that. That was always my stance, was that I don't believe in God because as a man of reason, which I think we are man endowed with, especially over the last few hundred years, as we just understand so much more than we oh, did. We're very well endowed. Is that we are well endowed, yes, no doubt about it. Is that we we understand and could use proof and we and we this, <laughs> this thing in the face. This thing <laughs> fades ham hock away. <laughs> Sorry, Colin. I've been listening the whole time. Uh is that faith is the one thing that we take and we're like, well, you don't need proof. And in fact, if you need proof, you don't have faith. Yep. And I was like, well, that, that never made sense to me as a sure. kid. Because I was just like... It's the Kobayashi Maru. It's a, it's a lose-lose situation. Well, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, we're men of science. Everything around us is science. This this this, this microphone, this camera, this light. Like, everything around here is the, the embodiment of research and the embodiment of scientific understanding. And the proof is in the pudding. The fucking microphone works. The camera works. The light works. There it is. You can see it. You know, this the video is the proof of, the, of it. But God's one of those things where it's like, well, you're never going to know that God existed. And they brought up a really interesting example. And I never thought about this. And I think you'd especially enjoy this because you went to Catholic school like I did. for, And I went for a little while. You went the entire time. Which was... I did too. Oh, you, I thought you went to public school. I went to Catholic school until I was in fourth grade. Oh, okay. So for, oh, early you on. didn't learn shit. What? You, what, you got first communion? Get uh, out of here, I learned bitch. That first I, reconciliation? I, I had to care. wear the world's like most cardboardy yeah, uniform. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, everyone did. That was well, the, that was that the, the worst. worst. And then on gym days, on gym days, did you have to wear like the sweatpants or the no, shorts? No, on gym stuff? days, I had to wear because my Catholic school was cheap. We, my mother didn't want to buy anymore. I had to wear the same cardboard uniform, so I just sweat through it. <laughs> and the thing didn't breathe. So after like the first you wore your uniform to... PE like you're walk- running around so in your I mean, uniform? in the third grade PE was like just recess we didn't have PE in third grade okay. but you'd go and you'd go to play kickball and by the time you were done like running one, one of the bases you would just have just the sweat gross and, but the but the collar would still be starched which is amazing uh 
so one of the things that they said that I think we'd all appreciate, and it was just interesting, was that because everyone's like, God doesn't reveal himself. But God did reveal himself to a whole bunch of people. Yeah, to like a lot of people. And I never really thought about it in the sense of... I, it's not even not even that early. I'm talking about like not even new Old Testament stuff. I'm talking about New Testament stuff. Like people did witness God, like Jesus's miracles, yeah, and then the resurrection all this stuff. And for some reason, I never thought about it in the sense that like actually, the whole like you know, blessed are you who who believe without seeing is kind of bullshit because like those guys saw. did see. Yeah, they the saw. guys that wrote that and said that fucking did see. Yeah, you know That's what I mean. A good point. Like, and that was like, and I was, I was like, I was like. That was like a revel- like a, a revelation to me because I think pretty deeply about religion often and mm-hmm. read a lot about it. And I was like, "Holy shit! Why did I never think about that?" Like those guys, they had kind of hypocrites. And even even the guys that didn't yeah. see directly had signs, right? And, and and at least primary sources. For instance, like the Bible wasn't written until Jesus was already dead for probably a sure. hundred years, at least the the New Testament, and you know. 200, 300 AD or whatever, but they had like primary sources like that they trusted, like Josephus and stuff, and then like people they knew or their friends were apostles. Like as it got further and further out, like there was no more proof anymore, and that got me thinking, like what nothing what, left to show, man. What kind of proof would you need? Because the next time that God, according to, to the Bible, according to Revelation stuff, would appear is when the Earth's when over. It's over. Yeah, in trouble. And and trouble. but see, doesn't that that right there is like it just it it all. You know, I used to go to Catholic school, and there was there was yeah, a time I heard in the fourth grade. Yeah, there was and there was a time I was going to church every Sunday, and partially the only reason I went was because my mom would take me to Coco's afterward, and I would eat three to four of those little tiny jelly packets that they have. I don't and know what Coco's is. Coco's is like a it's just like a restaurant chain. But you know that you know the little packets. Where sure. You, you, yeah, you, you put on your toast. Off. Yeah, yeah. So that's how she got me out of bed, uh, which is why I was wildly overweight when I was a child. I digress. Just going somewhere towards the religion topic or just the no, obesity. No, it, it always it always just sort of occurred to me like. You know, when you get to make a club, you get to make the rules. Um, and to me, the Catholic Church, especially the Catholic Church, seemed to be a, a, a club that was that had rules that were predicated around keeping people at bay and keeping people uh, from questioning. From questioning, right? Namely, that if you don't have blind faith, one day when he does come back and prove you wrong, yep. you get decimated. This is the kill switch to religion, or at least right. the Catholicism, um, is that by questioning, even thinking these questions, right, you are in fact poking a giant hole in your own belief right. structure, which then spirals you out of tr- into trouble. And what, what kills me is when you start looking into other religions, like Scientology, um, which is a religion. It's more of a cult, I guess, but calling you a no more. I don't want to go down that road. No, but what I'm saying is when you start looking into those, I don't understand how you can look at that as a belief system and go, those people are crazy, and then look at... Catholicism and go. Oh, these guys are spot on. No, I agree. No, I actually, I one hundred percent agree that I've said that. Be, I've said that be, as much before. Where it's like, why is everyone targeting Scientology? How is it any crazier than this like, other made up? Yeah, shit? Or, or, or you know, yeah. I had, I had, well, I t- I had was, friends it, that were Mormons growing up, and they would yeah. tell me about their religion. I'd be like that, and me being a he kid, looked in a hat like, or whatever and read the, the yeah. tablets. You're crazy, and then you, yeah, when you stop and have that critical thinking about a story you read in the Old or New Testament, it is the You're this like, guy no, 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 walked no, no, no. on water. Yeah. Or this guy? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, you looked. Yeah, you looked in the hat and you figured out everything you needed for your religion. But that's bullshit. We all know you have to be on a mountain. There has to be a couple tablets. Yeah, yeah. God has to etch them. Uh, you know the commandments yeah, yeah, yeah. into these, th- and then you have to kind of go forth and tell your people. Also, make sure you part a giant red sea while you're at it. Um, you know, and a lot of people, you know, to play a devil's advocate because I know there's going to be quite a few people that are listening that are like, hey, you're unfairly sort of not representing the size or or the, or the sides here. I will say this that. If I have friends that that do believe in organized religion that uh, take all of these stories as sort of uh, allegories yeah. for how you should live mm-hmm. your life, and in that in in that respect, yes, I can I can understand that I can understand why people have faith not in an all divine power, all seeing, all all knowing God who is making sure that um, the prisoners are, are not fighting in the yard because that that's really what we're talking about here, right? Like God in this instance is a warden, and we're all these prisoners. And we don't know if he's up there in that watchtower or not, so we have to be good because if he is up there and we start a fight. He's gonna come down and put us in solitary I don't know, confinement. You want to look right? at whatever. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying is like I, I don't I don't want to go too far off on a tangent on that. Sure, but sure, 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 What I'm saying is that there is there is the concept of like do people have blind faith to be good or do they have faith in God because they're afraid of Him because sure. they're afraid sure, sure, that sure, sure, of sure. the oh, repercussions. Yeah, there's, there's incredible fear, dude. Um, of God. But you know, at the same time, like I, I used to, you look at all these stories and you also say you know if you, if you're gonna believe them as sort of like teachings of how to be a good person, I can see that. And I can understand why you would want to belong to an organization that does that for you. Right, where you go to every Sunday, you you run a bunch of people who are just trying to be better and are just trying to have a uniform understanding of what it means to be a good person, and I get that. Um, but having said that, you know, I, I I listen to these scriptures and I'm just like, dude, none of this, like, there's got to be a better way to get that across than the teaching, homily. than teaching these things that don't 
outwardly make any logistical sense are the things that we can see in this world around us. Which I think kind of to your point is what what would it take for you to believe in God? So I would need he would need to show himself or she show himself or it to show himself, itself like that. I don't understand like why that's such a big thing. That's that's how you know in my mind that it's fake. Is because like I can the camera's real. The light is real. Right. The planet is real. The solar system is real. The star is real. The moon is real. The galaxy is real. The black hole at the center of the galaxy is real. Somewhere amongst all of this shit is God. You know? And and to me, like, that, that's so bothersome because it's like we have these great powers of observation and we should demand. I'm not saying we demand anything of a deity, but we should demand <laughs> God. You know, we should demand of ourselves a rigorous scientific method a scientific method to, to, to uh, exactly sure. to, to figure out like all these things because we, we we just set a different precedent for religion than anything else you know and that's the thing that really is bothersome to me because if god is real why wouldn't you want why wouldn't he want you to know it doesn't yeah. make any, doesn't make any sense. sense it doesn't make what any is, what, sense like my question i'll rephrase your question is what does he get out of you not knowing if he's real or not I don't know. Complete what that, fucking. What does that get? He gets a, a lot, some blind faith from a few billion people, and then the other few billion people just don't give a shit. Yeah. And so it's like, well, why, like, why? There's just there's literally no proof. That's the thing is there's no proof. Yeah. It's not even like there's oh there's this. Some people will be like oh look at the it's like the Fibonacci sequence and stuff like the 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 the, the um patterns you see in the in, in the universe and it's like well it's the signs of god and i'm like no maybe it's just a sign of a natural order it's you know like science. like yeah like like the, the you know so everything came from the same sort of you know thing yeah what do they say like the spiral arms of the galaxy are like mathematically equivalent to the spirals of like on a clam or on a like a or a, you know not a clam but like a some sort of crustacean Blah. in the sea and like and like it's like Blah. and and it's like slow fade on the clam to me it's like i don't it just doesn't make any sense like there are things there are there are universal principles that break reality that break the universe that black holes in the event horizon break everything we know about physics if you travel fast enough you can slow and stop time you know what i mean like there's all these weird things like you could travel forward in time we know how to do it you know what i mean like you could do it so like there's all these weird breaks in the universe and then somewhere in the in, like you have to somehow understand that god is somewhere in there somehow divinely that's part of his plan is that you can break these things that you can you know travel near the speed of light come back and thousands of years have passed even though 10 minutes have passed for you you know like yeah. all these like weird things it's like none of this makes any sense so when people look at like people always point to you know especially with evolution well the missing links and all that kind of stuff the missing links are not really missing anymore and and there's plenty of proof in the geological and 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 um biological record that these things exist and the same thing with the origin of the universe where everyone's like well the big bang where did it come from and like that's a that's what bill nye always says where he's like it doesn't just because we can't answer all these questions doesn't mean that god exists you know what I mean? Like, we have no idea what was there before the Big Bang. All we know is that it happened. Right. And we know what it happened because all you have to do is look. The observa like, observational science, right? You can like, tell that everything is moving away from everything's been Everything's moving away and has been moving away at each other the entire existence of the, of the galaxy. So there was yeah. – everything started at one point. Yeah. That's, that's how we know that. So, like, that's just – so, like, okay, so we know that. Where is your proof of God? You know? And it's like, well – Everything's beautiful on Earth, and look at that sunset. I mean, we're gonna show you. We're gonna show you a book that's been rewritten fifty times. So it's not like I respect faith and I I'm respect religion, but I also want. I, I wish that there was more of a. Uh, I wish there was more of an emphasis, even when among religious people and people that really believe in theological people, to say like maybe we do need proof, and like how what is the standard for proof? Does he have to show himself? Do we we ask him to show himself See, in some way, or yeah. or do we really just think that like the beautiful sunset is God's proof? You know what I mean? That he exists because you can get a beautiful sunset on any planet. You know what I mean? It's not like it's it's not unique to Earth. An Earth like planet is not unique to the solar system. Right. And and you as we I all as anyone knows at this point, life is not unique to this planet. It's not possible. So like there's all of these different things that like don't aren't answered. And sometimes I wonder if we are being held back by this notion of an ancient deity. And if we aren't being held back by it, then how do we prove that it exists? Because if you proved it to me, I would believe. You know, you can prove mathematically yeah, so any of those things that I just discussed. So it would why be can't we prove so that? difficult to prove that, right? It's not, uh, you know, unless there was a you know a, a puff of smoke and Morgan Freeman appeared in front of me like he did for you know Bruce Almighty, but I would probably just think I was going crazy. And I, yeah, I'm watching a lot of X Files, and this is a perfect example of like the, the the sort of duality of me, right? Which is like I'm part Mulder and part Scully. Where if you showed me something, I'd want to believe in it, but then I would just be Scully trying to say, "There's got to be a scientific explanation for this." So, like for instance, if God were floating on TV, like above the Empire State Building, you're like, "Oh, it's God," I'd be like, "It's fake." 
I could do that in After Effects, right? I don't know what it would take for me, my logical brain to be like, I know exactly how they would do that trick, or I know how they would fake a moon landing because I've seen Transformers 1, 2, 3, and 4 where they have, you know, people landing on the moon or doing whatever. Um, I don't know. I mean, and part of me doesn't even want to believe because I because I've been so not anti religion because again I'm not anti religion. I just I chose I had a break with the church right around the time I was you know in fourth or fifth grade and I decided I didn't want to go to Catholic school anymore because I wasn't getting anything out of it. I was I was sitting through church bored out of my mind drawing pictures when I should have been paying attention and I wasn't because I purposely wasn't. I was like I'm not getting anything out of these stories. These don't make sense to me. They're not even. I mean. If you're telling me these are fiction, maybe I'll start paying attention. But you're trying to tell me that these are nonfiction. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It's not vibing with me. There's something off about this. Um, it would have to be something amazing. Something amazing that I saw with millions of other people at the same time. And we all have that shared common experience. Because I think if it was just me, I'd be like, I hallucinated that. Or I'm not going to tell anyone that because they're not going to believe me. I don't know. Greg, what about you? Oh, I, I believe in God. You do believe I've in God. I've talked at length about that, yeah. yeah and you don't need Oh, God. I feel pre- yeah exactly no I mean I had a, not the organized I, religion exactly well that's that's my big thing with a lot of the things you guys have been throwing around is like I think you're getting hung up on what religion is like versus what God is or whatever sure you know what I mean I'm the same way I believe in God I don't believe in the Catholic Church right. you know I left that based on a number of different things stance on abortion women as priests so on and so forth mm-hmm. um but yeah, I mean, like you're talking about big things. For me, it's the little things, and that's what I've talked about before on this. The fact that I'm, whenever I'm, like, and it sounds very trivial to boil it down to stuff like this at this point. But like, w- I, like for me, there's always this uh, acknowledgement outside when I will walk the dog, or when I'm walking in any other city, or when I'm doing anything else where streetlights will go out. And I don't mean it in a mystical ghost sense that something's happening. It's an angel for me, it's just a nod. Exactly. I don't mean it in something goofy like that. It's just a nod of acknowledgement of like, hey, sure. when I'm alone with my own thoughts and stuff like that. It's back to what we always talk about too. Is that I. And why, when I was ra- raised in a Catholic school, Catholic education, that creationism never came up for me. Like you said, evolution and science, this is taught as mm-hmm. this is fact, and then religion is theology, and this, that, and the other. I still stand by the fact that I understand the science of how my eye works, and I understand the science of how the microphone works, but I also understand that there was this past where none of that was a thing, and that there was a past before that where we were there's you know single cell organisms and all and all and all this. For me to believe to get to where we are now, there had to have been some nudge in the right direction. And again, I don't mean a literal nudge, and I don't mean that I'm saying the Big Bang didn't happen or anything crazy. You know what I mean? I'm not going out to discredit science. For me, I just feel like there is a path, and I don't know if it's just my path, if this is just my universe, if everyone thinks and feels the same way I do, if everybody See, processes information the same way I do or not. I, I, I'm on your side with this. I think we have talked about this and I do I apologize for Well no no it's just it. it's conversation with Colin mixed into other stuff right. and then like little quips here and there. I, um I, I've gone out and said and I will say again that I don't believe necessarily there being a God in the Catholic sense of there is a man in a white robe sitting up in the clouds we can't see, and he's choosing the, the destiny Gate and, and the fate of every single person on this planet. Sure. First of all, that's that's just a shitty job. I wouldn't yeah. want that job. That's that's a hard job. Um, full of a lot of heartache, but I do believe that there's an energy or some sort of common spirit that we all share, and I don't, I can't put my finger on it. There, I have seen instances um, of just great inspiration on this planet that I believe we all share something. I can't put word, put it into words. I don't think it's a god. I don't think it's a mighty creator, but I think that we do share a sort of spiritual energy together as humans on this planet that we could potentially more tap into and we could we could listen to a lot more. Um, and I'll liken it to this. We, you know, the four of us a few months ago uh, decided that we were going to go on our own and do this thing, right? And we stayed positive and we had a common goal and we wanted it to be successful and it was. And that's really, when you think about it, not something that was in our hands. We did not... We made it successful because we tried really, 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 really hard. But at the end of the day, we put something out there that resonated with thousands of other people and they gave it right back to us. And that positive thought, that sort of like seeing is believing, we believed that it could be a thing before it was a thing. We had faith in it and it became real because of that. And I don't want to get into like a karmic energy talk and I'm not going to, I don't want to start talking Eastern philosophies or any of that stuff, but I do believe in the power of positive thought and I do believe in karma and I do believe that there is, um, there is an energy that we all share as human beings, whether you want to call it the spirit or whether you want to call it, you know, a God or a creator that does exist that we just, we can't explain. There might be a scientific explanation for it. Um, you know, they always say that thing when like when the, when the body dies, it loses like a little bit of weight instantaneously. What is that? No one knows. Um, so I, I do think there are things out there that we could explain, but why are we so afraid to explain God with scientific terms? 
I don't understand that, right? Why does it have to be blind faith? Why can't we – you see a sunset. That can be God, and also there's a scientific explanation behind that as well, But right? I see – and again, the sunset thing, I feel like you're getting hung up on. No, no, we read that. these shitty religion books, like my, my, my religion workbook. You remember these motherfuckers, mm. and they'd be like, yeah, this page, do, actually. this couple walking on the beach or whatever. It's like, all right, well, like, you know, it's just like God the, the really God's beauty in that or whatever, right? No, that is nature's beauty, but then again, where does the well, nature – That's the, what I'm saying is I'm like there is an energy in the world, right? We are all made of the same thing. Like Matter, the you know atoms stardust stakes um we all we all come from the same thing we all do every mo- every atom in our body every molecule in our body is made of of the same fundamental things that the universe is made out of Kevin is that correct stardust stardust, stardust. no it is it, it, um, it is and so we share some sort of commonality whether we like it or not there's got to be something deeper in that and there will I'm sure like a, you know I'm sure a hundred years from now we'll look back and go. We understand a lot more about how the human brain works, how DNA works, how the, how gene structures work than we did before. And there are these crazy commonalities, and there are, there is other potential that human bodies can tap into that we don't know anymore. Um, is that God? I don't know. Sure. I mean, it is it is the potential for a, for for us to elevate to a higher state of being. So, and that really is what the promise of of a God is, right? Someone sure. watching out for us that we can eventually elevate ourselves in His honor or his, or His or her um, or its its you know image. Um, Back to the claim. Again. So I'm not going to say there's no god, but I just don't think it's a god in that, or the mollusk. Is it? Oh, it was yeah. a clam. Sorry. Um, I'm not going to say. I, I just I just don't like the idea of of you know God being used as a control mechanism for telling someone who they should. And, and again, should not be. see that's when we get to religion, right? And that's why I have a problem, a huge problem with religion. You know what I mean? What you're saying is all religion problems that there are there that that's are right. guiding. And yeah, and, and that's and that's the thing with and I agree with Greg in the sense that you can separate theological religious study from scientific from a deity or a god or whatever because i think that religion has largely been a inc- incredibly destructive force on this on this world like for the last 2000 plus years like it immediately puts you into fanboy camps if we're right and they're wrong yeah and it's just been it's been the res- like wars have been fought just countless at this point hundreds of millions of people have been killed because of religion over sure. time you know sure. like it's you know it's the greatest war of all time i guess was technically fought by you know an atheist but it, it, like the you know which is world war Two, whatever i don't think hitler wasn't a religious man and obviously the communists were, were atheists but the um it's been a destructive force but it's also been a force for good in the sense that there's a lot of great charities and and oh you know they uh, my dad always talks about you know um catholic stand you know my dad's a very charitable person gives a lot of money to charities and he's that's like his nature as a catholic man is to help the poor and the and the underserved and so like that so there's positivity there too and I'm not saying anyone should or shouldn't be religious. Like I really don't care what you what you are. I mean, that's your that's your freedom to, to believe what you want. My big my big thing is like I want proof. You know what I mean? And I don't think it's really like. And some people like are almost aghast by that. I mean, like, well, you want proof of God? And it's like, yes, I want proof. You know? Why are we running around like? I was reading a lot about about Apollo 11 lately, and they had these like extraordinary pictures that they were taking, and it's like, yo, these motherfuckers are on the moon. Yeah, dog. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> they're on the moon. <laughs> They're not on and this like, planet and, and, and like they're just not here anymore, you know. Yeah. And they're, they're like being. They were talking about it in the sense that like they were the first people affected by the gravity of another body, yeah. right? And I was like, religion doesn't take this into account. Catholicism doesn't take this into account. Like this is so. We're so much. We are so much more inconsequential and minute to this universe than we think we are. And like, there's almost a self-important kind of aspect to us being like, well, there's a reason for all this. And I, my whole thing is like, I'm not so sure there's a reason for this at all. I think that, like, whether you believe in the rare earth theory, you believe that we're the only planet that happens to have life, which is fucking impossible, I think. Mm-hmm. Or whether you think life is, is elsewhere. There might be life elsewhere in, you know, not complex life, but life elsewhere in the solar system, nonetheless, in this galaxy, yeah. in this universe. Um, well, then they, they found bodies of water on Mars, haven't they? Right. Yeah, there's, there's water on multiple moons and so like that. I mean, it's not, so not, that, not, that, not that water precludes life, but water is a building no, but block. There's, so got, there's we understand probably going to be something in there that we find that's, in, you know, a bacteria or something we're seeing. And, and that's, that's going to be the thing that destroys the world. Well, yeah. no, that's going to be the major... to study it and 100%. that's going to get us. Well, that's going to... Well, no, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, in a more... I mean, I agree with you in a more theological way. Like, the second a scientist concludes that there's life somewhere else, that is the backbreaker. You see, of I just, spirituality I just, on this in this world, see, I, and anyone and anyone who tries to tries to spin it like somehow like God or the Bible or anything, and I understand it's the difference between religion and God, but that destroys Earth based religion forever, because like it is all about the the uniqueness of the human mm-hmm. and religion, religion. Yeah, yeah, and suddenly right. and suddenly we find on Mars some some um, fossilized remnant of a, a very single single cell organism, or we go to Titan or Europa or one of these moons mm-hmm. around Jupiter or Saturn, and we find life in an ocean somewhere. That maybe is a fish or something like that. That's yeah. it. 
I mean, like, if you find it that close to home, see, but that's, and then you look in the sky and you see all of those stars everywhere and all the systems and all these planetary systems and all like that, it's like suddenly you realize, like, wow, we aren't special at all because we found it three planets over in a gas giant, yeah, a moon surrounding a gas giant. You know what's going it, on, like twenty five AU Pluto. from the sun, where there's no sunlight. Yeah, come on, you know, like that, and that's the kind of stuff I start thinking about. Where they like Greg is able to really not fuse these things together Mm -hmm. and i find it really hard not to because religion is the study of god or the belief in god or gods if you're polytheistic and that's Mm -hmm. totally fine and no one's right or wrong um we've gotten a little away from the centralized question of what the proof we need is Mm -hmm. but to me it really all spurred from the fact that like wow i never really realized as as someone who really i think understands the bible better than normal layman although not as well as obviously as a theological scholar or a hardcore christian because i don't where i was like wow like we really don't believe in visual proof even though the people that were all subjects in this book had visual proof and maybe that's what we need is some sort of like if god if i was on a boat with some guy named jesus and he was like i'm gonna make water and wine now or i'm gonna i'm gonna bring fish i'm gonna use <laughs> you stone he sounds like that comedian <laughs> cast no, your net right. cast uh, your net here where you never caught fish and you're gonna get a bunch of fish i'd be like holy shit yeah yeah but see at the you know same mean, like, time, what did you do or if he walks on water or something that's like so maybe they saw these things and they did believe, and maybe it's hard for them in historicity to be like, yo, we fucking really did see this. You know what I mean? And yeah, you're not but, going to, but we did. But then I'm like, that's not fair. Why can't you show every generation it something yeah, crazy? But see, it wouldn't matter, though, because, I mean, all those things you described, Chris Angel can do in Vegas. You know, like, and that's what I get to is I'm, it's going to have to be something big. Maybe I saw Chris that Angel, dude walk maybe, up a fucking side of a the, building. Maybe he's Jesus. He's maybe from he's Long Island. second coming? Blah. Blah. No, you're, Kevin, no, you're, fade in the clam. No, you're, you're absolutely right. It's so it's just a complex question. I'm not even it's sure. Like, where, like, it's just an interesting topic for me because, as I said before, one of the things I really do respect is faith because it really is one of those things where it's like everyone's trying to tell you you're wrong or like that there's no proof and there isn't. But you have individual proof or individual faith where you don't need it. And I do respect that. You mm-hmm. know, um, I know very, very smart people that are very religious. You know, and and so I don't think it's a mark of intelligence or lack thereof. I uh, to me, it's more of they're very stupid atheists. I know that's them true. too. Oh, that's very true. Um, I, I so you know, and I know very very smart, highly educated you know religious folks. Uh, to me, it was just like I often ask the question, and there is no answer of like what is the proof because I can see science all around me. So what and and the the fruits of science. See, to me, you were talking about like well, humanity being you know we were talking about humanity being here as being like proof of something or like you know some you know. To me, it's like oh, something from nothing. Yeah, to me, it's like I think that humanity is an accident. That like we outsmart evolution. That like we're the first ones that are self-aware, you know, and that mm. that is not what nature intended. And if that happens, that must happen everywhere eventually, because like we grew up, you know, as humans in South Africa and you know the the diaspora, we ended up all over the world because we just understood how to use tools and we understood a little bit about science. Before you knew it, we believed in animal husbandry and agriculture. And before you knew it, we had technology and iron and 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 all these things. Now we have steel and, and the internet and all these. It's like we've just we're out of control. Mm-hmm. And I think that is why we dominate the planet. It's not it's not because of and why we're, we're, we're spacefaring, why we landed men on the yeah. moon, why we will go to Mars and we will go to all these places. I was reading about man missions that the Soviet Union was planning to Venus, which is really weird and interesting. Be in cool. the 60s and it's like that's an accident that's not yeah. that's not it, like god didn't see that's see, the big thing is like there's no way god thought that's we were my thing space faring I, 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 when i say when i say there's there's something out there i don't i don't mean something out there as a control factor i don't mean something out there where there's a god and there's an end game right and, and you know with, with with organized religion and a lot especially with catholicism there's an end game Right, judgment day is happening at one point. You better make sure that sure. You know, if you if you make it to that day, you are you are a good, sure. a, a good Christian. Um, with what I'm talking about is, I don't believe there is a, some sort of pre uh, a preordained or or uh, sort predestination. of predestination predestination for for any of this. I just think that there was there is a tremendous thing that happened a long time ago, and we came from that. Um, and there's something special about that, and it is science. It can be dis- explained as science. I don't think we'll ever fully understand what that is, um, but we do have to. I still think that the, the idea of having faith in something is not necessarily a bad thing, as far as that is concerned. And I think you can have faith in things that you can't necessarily explain, or um, or, or or can't prove necessarily right off the bat. Like, and and, and I, again, I pinpoint what we did. We had faith in something. We we, we took a leap of faith, right? Uh, and it worked, and we were rewarded with that because we took a risk and because we had faith that our together. Uh, we had something special. Uh, it, it actually worked so far. We'll knock on, we'll knock on uh, IKEA wood. Um, and I've seen instances of that. You know, it's funny. I was talking to I was talking to Hunter the other day. 
he believes in something similar to that where he's like, you know, you, you have this tremendous potential you can tap into if you just believe and you just know and have faith that you can do something. The world will find a way to help you do that thing. You, Your body will find a way. And he he, he, he read a book and he recommended it for me and I can't remember the title off. The Bible? No, it's not the Bible. It was a Deepak Chopra book, but um, quite the opposite of a Bible. Uh, but, but it makes sense because if you, you do see these instances of these people doing these great things and you're like – there is something special about that and people can do amazing things and people do achieve amazing things every day and you can't discredit that there is a power in that what is that power i don't know i don't know if it's like a i don't know if it's a magical power uh, or you know given to us by a creator or if it's just a spirit that we all share much like the force that we can tap into or like i need a little, a little extra something right now world give it to me and every cell in your body works together and gives it to you you know what i mean um I, you know, there is something about that. I, don't, I can't put a finger on it. I've never actually tried to, to vocalize it before for the most part. There's something there, though. He brought, he brought up a really interesting point where he was talking about, you know, when all the, all, all, you know, all the cells in your body can work together and to help you accomplish great things. But when they stop working together and they start working against you, um, it starts being cancerous, right? And, and, and so there is, a, there is a power in sort of thinking positively about things and, ha- and, and, and wanting to have faith in something. That I think that we, I don't want to discredit, and I don't. I definitely want people that are listening out there to think that we are discrediting them having faith and them needing that faith to sort of exist and, and excel in this world. Um, but yeah, to Greg's point, God and organized religion are two separate things. So I'm gonna stop talking now. Okay. Done. What's your topic? Oh, my topic comes from the audience, as always. As always, not always. We we most of the time. We 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 had a topic uh, I think last week from Patreon or this week from Patreon. Yeah. Last from week. the audience. From the audience. <laughs> it's our audience. The, my topics a lot of times come from Twitter. Remember, guys, if you want a topic on the show, please tweet at Nick underscore Scarpino uh, with your topic suggestion. I write them all down. Uh, we get to them one by one when we can. I've got a bunch of them, but um, I will get your topic hopefully eventually. Uh, like at Mick Beardo or Mike Beardo, depending on. He doesn't have an E in it. Remember when I asked you if you could read your own handwriting? Oh, I did. I just didn't write an E. Sure you didn't. But I think it's Mike. Uh, if you were in a video game, what would your signature move be? It's so like a video game, or is it a fighting game? Is it a third-person game? What guess, are we doing here? I, I'm going to go with my own, the, one of the only games that I play that have signature moves, which is Smash. So if oh, you were geez. a character in Smash, what would your move be? Jesus Christ. What's yours? Have you thought about it? Yeah, I have thought about it. Lay it on. It would have to be a projectile move. It would have to be a, a long range, a range move. Uh, I would have to be able to sit on the side of a of a of the screen and yeah. and shoot it at you. And I think my move would be the shooter. You stealing my moves? Yeah, I'm stealing your move. I just stole it. What are you shooting? Just bullets at you at your out head, of your fingers. Your face, yeah. That's gross. Like cyborg. Well, that's that's like that's completely different. That Energy wasn't blast. at all what you just said. No, no. What if you were a wrestler? What would your move be? What would you? What, I was a professional wrestler. It's yeah. the Greggy Giga team. That that's already done. I I have 24 hours of backyard wrestling tapes in that closet. <laughs> what is the Greggy Giga? The Greggy Giga team is actually I I stole it from. Oof. Probably WrestleMania 2000. The, the when you go through, you know, you unlock all the moves for your created characters. And I started using it in backyard wrestling because I just for a long time had the stunner. I just stole the Stone Cold stunner, kick you in the, drop you into the stunner, and then that was he, just that's. I mean, you're not even trying on that one. You just straight. Well, up guess what? That. There's only so many moves, for, especially for there's out of shape backyard wrestlers. An infinite amount of moves that you could have chosen from. So basically, the Greg Guillotine is similar, right? So okay. I would you you I, do it on Portilla. Yeah, I grab I grab him by the arm, I pull him up, and then I put him up, and the fireman's carry like this. Mm-hmm. So they're up there like this in, in the yeah. fireman's carry. I got yeah. him in the rack. And then I'd kick him out into the stunner. So imagine I throw Portillo's butt out back towards that. And then his, of course, these aren't, you're, you have longer arms. Yeah. Your arms aren't are draped across my chest, his chest like his. Mm-hmm. But you kick him out and then you fall into the stunner like that. Which, and the stunner is what? It's exactly. a so-called stunner. He, is really, that, he enjoyed that very You much. kick him in the gut. It, well, uh, uh, hey, you want to get up and I'll is do that it you? He, I don't, oh, it's when he goes like this. Yeah, so right. On it. You yeah. have him down that, and I, you land in you land in the like a sitting position with your legs extended. On the oh, ground, I see. The other guy lands on his knees with his basically guillotine right over your shoulder. Okay, I like that. And he pops off and falls. Down. So you have a little. It's a little variation on There's the theme. There's a flourish. There. There's a flourish there. Like they made that. it not just a Stone Cold Stunner ripoff anymore, I and it just that. became this WrestleMania 2000 video game move ripoff. It must have been NWO Revenge, maybe WCW NWO Revenge, because it was. I had it for, for a long time. There's only a couple BYW BYWFs where I didn't have. The great guillotine, and I just used the stunner instead. I eventually figured it out. Though. I like this though. I like that. My other one, since we, it was backyard wrestling, right? Now, of course, this is a comp. We, you know, BYWF Backyard Wrestling Federation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. not a creative name at all. We weren't creative. We didn't know. It's one of those things when you start it's, something. It's a little more creative than the worldwide. What, what is it? World with WWD World Wrestling World Wrestling Federation. 
World Wrestling Federation, whatever. Yeah. Um, since we would wrestle in the front yard for our week to week show, mm-hmm. and then our pay per views were in the backyard. Did you actually charge people for that? No, we never. These these tapes, these we didn't tell anybody about. It. You didn't show anybody these. You're a bunch of. You didn't show your girlfriend like you showed her your action figure. I think I showed one girlfriend it. I did. I do remember she came over and she wanted to go out. And I was like, I'm exhausted. We just did a backyard wrestling thing. I showed her a tape and she, it was weird. She, she was like, all right. She, she clapped. Totally she clapped. Up. She clapped and made out with me later. So really? It was fun. Yeah. Wow. Fuck yeah. Good for you. It's huh? part of my thing. I mean, what? And people watch me do dumb stuff all the time on this and make out with me later. Um, so this is again. WWF attitude errors happen mm-hmm. at the same time. You may remember uh, The Rock, one of his moves, the People's Elbow. I've never heard of him. The corporate elbow. You remember this? Is he um, is he still relevant today? No, or? hasn't done anything. Went oh. into a really a bunch of really bad movies. This okay. car franchise just terrible. He's just I don't know what he's doing with this. I don't career. understand why they still make car movies. Anyways, um, he had this move called the People's Elbow where he takes off his yeah. elbow pad, throws it in the crowd, bounces off the ropes b- both times, drops it on somebody. Right? Yeah. What I would do to what I would do when I needed to lose matches is do the Gre- the Greggy elbow. Did you or guys whatever. decide ahead of time who's going to win? Who's yes. Gonna lose? How do you think we did? How do you think we did anything? It's not. But it's my not question chaos is, out there. We'd go out there. We'd walk through the match. What we want to do? We, have the, we, we had, we had angles. Second. We had feuds. You gotta know who's going to win. Can you back, go, up back, up, back it up. Back it up. Back it up. What was the end goal with taping all of this stuff? Were you to make matches and watch them with your friends? So you showed these to people? No, the friends who were in the federation. <laughs> how many people were in the federation? <laughs> oh man. Uh, 15. It was an alternating cast. You had the core group, and then you have these hangers on who came by once in a while and did something. Did you at any point want to actually be a professional wrestler? Oh, yeah. You always kick that idea around every so often. Yeah. Somebody, you, I, have the, you have the physical makeup to be a professional I, You could have been. I, well, I know for 80s professional wrestler, yes. Yeah. I could have easily been one of the natural disasters. Me, Earthquake, Typhoon out there. I could have been a good manager. Still could be if this doesn't work out. But, no. You watched them with the people who were in them. You were putting on the show for each okay, other to I do see, something stupid. There's only so two of them. Like a DVD it, like you, I would think once in a while, like, yeah, it'd be cool. You know what I mean? Like Especially because this is during Mick Foley's you know, time when he's like they're showing his backyard wrestling. But there's like two guys in the Federation who really, really like thought they were maybe going to do it. You know what I mean? They, like, did they he get was a doing shot? Moves. Oh, no, 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 of course not. Can I ask this follow-up question? Yes, please do. Before I get to Colin's signature move. Sure. Um, oh, do, we do also want, have these. We, oh, yes, they're here in this house right now. We once set them to Ahmad Rashad as well because he had he hosted, <laughs> he hosted real TV. You remember Ahmad this thing? Ahmad Rashad. <laughs> Ahmad Rashad. Almost got on the air. We got a call back from a producer. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Wow, yeah, that must have so. been exciting. Yeah, it was, it was the biggest break of our lives. That was if only that had worked. Out. Oh, I forgot too. This is this is actually really fun. So you're asking who else saw these things? We wrestled, you know, blah blah, blah with each other, and then we'd show them to each other afterwards. Mm-hmm. I'll hang out, and then we play Grand Theft Auto too. Um, we ha- one of the kids went to another school, and so he would he'd bootleg the, the whatever he did, make his own copy. Then he'd go to school, and then he'd share them with another kid there who just liked wrestling. Mm-hmm. And that kid then would go home and write his own like report on it. Like he, this is before blogs were easy to yeah, get and do stuff. Right. So this kid would watch it and review match by match, promo by promo, and write it in like a voice, like he had a voice, like he was writing for the dirt sheets or whatever. Oh my god, it was awesome. So you want to talk about having an audience? That one guy, Paul, was amazing. He was killing it, and Paul, no one ever heard from him again. Went to the Air Force, never heard after that. Okay, um, not that I think something bad happened. I just didn't fill out a touch with the other friend. So I want you to mull over this idea. Sure, lay it on. We have technology. Sure. We can digitize, digi- the tapes we can and put digitize them these tapes and sell them as DVDs. The problem with this is the fact that I we then have to start cutting in these other wrestlers. How, who? What's the ownership yeah, rights? I, yeah, I think you guys you give you give people the split. I do not want to re- I don't, for the ten dollars we're going to make off these tapes. I do not want to reach out to these people. Try to find track down Evan Gulling. Whatever happened to him? I don't know. Well, I'm sure you could find him. It's the internet. Yeah. The other thing too is like another reason we didn't show these tapes to many people is imagine first off if you were a kid with a video camera Mm -hmm. and you could say whatever you want, and then we're making angles. So there was a few character. There was a one character who will remain nameless, whose whole shtick was that he would fuck your girlfriend, (laughs) and that's how you'd start. That's how you'd start new feuds with people. Because basically, what would happen is somebody with a girlfriend wouldn't come over one night. We'd cut a a fake promo where the guy's fucking the girlfriend, and then we'd bring that person in, sit them down, make them watch a tape. (laughs) So I'm gonna ask this question again. You had a lot of time. Can we please digitize some of us? And how old were you guys when this was happening? This is through high school, so this so is, you guys this like is 14, probably like 16, 14, 18. I no, why? Well, yeah, something like that. I'd probably like we probably started sophomore year, and oh. like it was heavy through junior, and then into senior, it tapered off for a while. I'm gonna use my copious free time that I have now that we have this job, and I don't do anything anymore. Yeah, to research this. Okay. Because I want to do, I want to make this. Thing. How many tapes do you think you have? How many I, hours I, of footage? I, there's 24 hours of footage. There's 12 tapes. Oh my god, this is a cool. Question. And this is all of the footage that exists. Yeah. And this is all the footage you ever did. 
No, one we did one at the very end, like when we were like, we're gonna get back into it. We did one like return to BYWF Jacked, and it didn't work. Like it was fine, but I never really copied it over. It, it was like Jason we Gantner's absolutely. second match. It was no big deal. We should absolutely we gotta put these save out. these and get them in the Smithsonian as soon as you We got to do something with these. We'll talk offline. I do worry about them breaking down one day or losing. They will. You, well, gotta you, get, should, you, gotta you should digitize them. Yeah, VHS does not. The best was how many times we almost killed each other or something horrible happened. I almost broke my arm once. Yeah. Poe almost broke his ribs, just laid on the ground in pain forever. N- Noonan, who's now a doctor, we almost paralyzed on a coffee can. On a coffee can. Yeah, he got a belly to belly suplex, and no one noticed that he was being tossed into a coffee can. Like, you remember these old like metal Folgers cans? Not yeah. the pussy ass ones now. He got tossed right spine, right, right at the base of his if spine. That thing he just is laid like, there. Back break off. If that thing was actually full and yeah. and not open, because you know that you had to like break the thing off. Yeah. That's a pretty no. It was dense... open, but it's still like it was like right on the edge of like the so- so- side that still had the metal part, so it wasn't gonna come down. Who is another video? guy? Bob jumped off the roof of his van and dislocated his shoulder, but he popped it back in. Oh, nice. Just like just like Briggs from. Lethal Weapon. Exactly. Like Rich from Lethal Weapon. Who was videotaped? Did you have like a cinematographer? No, like a, we all a video, switched a videographer? off. We all switched off. So like you're commentating while videotaping as well. So you're just, oh, walking, you're just right. walking next to the other guy talking and like doing so there's, all stuff. There's a couple things I'd uh, just off the top sure, of my head that go. I would do with this. One, By the way, call this backyard wrestling. <laughs> this is when we do this breakout. <laughs> this is going to be, this is, yeah. This, sorry, sorry, Mike Beard, Beardo. This just became about backyard wrestling. Um, Two thoughts on it. Sure, one, on me. we can we can get the guys to sign off on it. We put it up online because you know per video you're not making too much. I'm I'm happy to share any. Again, the language them, is going to be a bit more blue than I'd like. Bleep them out. Okay, we bleep it out, or we re-record all 24 hours of it with different actors. Oh sure, we show lines. other people tapes and have them do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's lots of stuff we could do with this. I'd Sounds like, like you just. I like. I want you to stew on it. Okay. I want you to stew on it. Okay. Because we have Kevin now. Sure. Now I want you to Kevin of course takes remember care of everything. Now. The athletic prowess I have. Yeah. And just. Imagine that in motion. It's not like you're getting real WWE stuff here. Sure. You're getting very slow leg drops. I used to cover my mouth after I got my braces off because I was afraid somebody was going to land on my face and fuck up my teeth. Then time time did it by itself. Still, Kevin, let me, let's, let's, get a, let's get an uh, opinion from the audience here. Kevin, what do you think? Should we forget about this or is there gold here? No, this is gold. This is gold. This is gold. gold. gold Kevin Jerry? says this is gold. Uh, I also think that if we plan it correctly, we can put it out as disc sets. Sure. And then lead up to the reunion episode where you all oh get back together God. and you have to do a backyard we wrestling all go match. On a and Gate we Park. do it fucking real. Yeah. Like real announcers. We get all of our celebrity friends to come and be in the audience. We get a ring girl you or know, four. I was making fun of this idea in my head because as as we know, there's nothing more popular than DVD box sets today in 2015. I'll tell you that right now. But then, <laughs> we'll, we'll but then that, that was a Blu-ray. stroke of genius is if we can get all of these guys back. <laughs> Think that's actually it. the that's the nugget. Think about it. That's the idea. Do we want to use? Do we want to talk to all pro wrestling and use their ring, or do we want to do it like legit out in the park? No, we're gonna. I want to go to your. <laughs> my house, house, house doesn't even exist anymore. Damn we're it. going to your. They knocked it down. Yeah. We can go to my There's parents' house in Riverside. They got a big backyard. Yeah. We'll fu- we have to figure out a way to do this as low budge and low fi as possible. Okay. Well, I'm well, sure we can talk. And to this and this and this can be done, Nick. As we've talked about in the past, this can be done because we're gonna need a solid probably month and a half or two months. Just the, the just in just in Glen just in Glen Ellen the oh, fig- right, right, I right. really want to get down to the to the source of just who Greg is and why he is the way he is and I really think that every time we talk about his childhood we get an inch closer to the answer just an inch closer about the psychoses of Greg Miller and this is just another this is another great example of it. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it goes up there with the peeing on the wall. Yeah. It goes up there with the two, you know, the, the the keeping all your toys sealed up and buying two of each. Of crying on <laughs> innocuous <laughs> Disney rides, of asking if of, your girlfriend wants to play with your toys. Yeah, ask, exactly. That that's in there. Uh, the blue hair, the blue hair, uh, yep. shitting in a planner, mm-hmm. which actually probably happened well in your into your twenties. Yeah, I, I was an adult when that happened. Uh, here's here's a, here's a good backyard wrestling yeah. story for you again. This is this would not only would this develop into an angle for us. That would go on because you know sometimes the best angles came from the ad libs. It would it would also develop into Poe's finishing maneuver. The, or, was uh, it like ever changing? No. Well, this is still when he was wrestling under the name of the Fabulous Gula. <laughs> fabulous Gula. <laughs> the Fabulous Gula. Where did Gula come from? <laughs> oh my God! We should save that story for when Poe's here. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's what I'm Poe's saying. nickname here's, here's, before Poe. That was like who grade were the school. Core guys in this. It was uh, it was me. Well, I mean, really, it was Mike. This guy named Michael Bryan, Jason. I, I need me, wait, 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 wait. Stop. I want everyone's wrestling name in addition to to their real name. They're not that many. They don't. They don't get much crazier. Than, well, Michael Bryan wrestled as Michael Bryan, but he was he was his angle was that he, we found it. We found a 
We oh he needed a shirt to wrestle in on mm-hmm. the first one and I had this horrible shirt that had been shipped to me by accident <laughs> it was gothic and it had like it it was for some heavy metal band that had like a, like the Grim Reaper on it and he had all this weird shit so we, we, he then had this angle that he was just a goth he was a gothic kid because he wore that one shirt and then when we got the new camera there was an there was a, a bunch of different modes you could put on it and there was one that I forget what they call it where it makes everything look coppery mm. and like everything else is like black mm-hmm. around him so yeah. we only shot his promos in that in that filter. <laughs> Did you guys edit this stuff? No, I mean we didn't know how. Like this is like the most basic of edits. You know what I mean? Like it was basically you're yeah. doing the tape edit where you're like, no, roll it back, roll it back. Okay, start here. Yeah, there'd be a, there'd yeah. be a little bit of that, but mainly it was like, all right, we had like the run of show of like, there's this match, there's this promo, there's this match, this match minute, promo. Like that meant that we filmed this match, a promo, this match, this match, this promo. Like there so was you guys no, literally live to tape. Like it was almost a oh live yeah event. yeah yeah oh yeah you rolled with the punches on whatever happened to this thing. See, so you got about we'll assume you got about five to six core guys in this. Sure, that's about right. So what I'm what I'm envisioning for this series is that we we do a look back, we do a retrospective on each one of these guys. Sure, right, uh, and we we start to seed out the actual match. We don't have to put all 24 hours out. I'm sure, sure. there are some matches that oh are there are some stinkers in there better than others, to. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think we we make a compilation set and we build up to the road to backyard wrestling 2016. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and you guys literally, I'm sure you guys will be in probably the same shape as you were back then. Yeah, probably. Uh, and I, I think it could be fantastic. I want you to just think about it. Okay, I'll think um, about it. Colin, on your note, I, I want to do what you're talking about. I do want to go back and do a retrospective on Greg and interview those people, but I'm fucking terrified <laughs> at what I might, might find. find. <laughs> I mean, I am, that's the thing is that – Because like, imagine if you go back and you're like – and no one will talk to you about Greg. No one. Like he's a big internet celebrity and no one – and everyone acts like they've never fucking heard of him in his hometown because they're – Terrified of him because of the one thing. It's not like a small town. You know like you're gonna go to a corner shop and everyone. I imagine know me. it's Smallville. And they're like, "Oh, Greg Miller, oh, man, never heard oh, of like him." Like Mr. Deeds when they go to the. <laughs> I can't even remember the town's name. What the hell was the town's name? I can't remember anymore. Um, What's up, Deedsy? Yeah, um, I think I. I don't know. I mean, that's one. That's one of the things I want to do more than everything. We love these video games, all these movies, whatever. But I really want to just tell the story of Greg Miller, and like, <laughs> I think I think to be able to do that, we need time, we need means, and we got to go to Illinois. And I think that that's that's fine with me if we want to do that, but it's going to take us a while. We talk about fucking Ken Burns documentary. This thing's probably going to be thirty hours long. <laughs> I mean, how deep do you really want to get in? I mean, how long do you really want to? How deep do you want to get into this? Well, I you just, need to get uh, into the fabulous Gula, and then the, when he tra- transitioned to just being Poe, because then like Poe's wrestling thing was that he <laughs> his matches. Why are you changing the subject? It's not about Poe. It's oh, about sorry, you. I'm sorry, I thought we're no, I want to hear. What was Poe's signature move? <laughs> Oh, that's a different story. We're, that's still fabulous, school. Okay, but Poe's shtick was that you know the song "Crazy Train," Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, yeah. That played. If Poe was in a match, he came out second, and that played the entire time because that was the tempo we wanted to keep for Poe matches. Okay. And Poe was crazy. Poe would do crazy stuff. All right, man. I, I want to see some of this stuff. I, it's inspiring to me that you guys risk life and limb every weekend. And my dad for my, just the fifteen of you to watch. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and you know, have you thought of the fact that if you guys now granted this was a long time before YouTube came about. Yeah. But have you if you digitized these and started a backyard wrestling channel? A, we would be huge. But you guys would be huge. Yeah, I remember there because we thought we were so clever being you know BYWF, mm-hmm. and then you Google searched or not even Google at the time, whatever you searched, there was a BYWF thing up in Canada. Yeah. Like and they they were putting their videos online digitized, and I was like blown away that this technology. Existed. Were you guys better? No, they were way better. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, we were all we were all pretty bad. They had better production value, obviously, by uploading their stuff and new right. stuff. But the really crazy thing was is that you know, again, you're commentating, you know, on matches that you w- that you may have been feuding with that person, so it wouldn't make sense. So like sometimes we had like stage names, and I don't remember. I don't. It, it was like not, the announcer's name. Yeah, it wasn't like held to very strongly, but like every so often you'd know that somebody had a feud or something, so you couldn't talk about it. And we took to calling Poe Mr. Roboto. <laughs> And there was a Mr. Roboto in this BYWF we found too. It was really bizarre. We were just not. It was you just weren't creative. You thought uh, you were being really creative. No, I mean I, I go didn't back. Have a character that fucked everybody else's That's, girlfriend. Though. This is pretty creative, though. I mean, for for a group of high school students to do this is pretty impressive. And what yeah. were you, what were you were you was this instilled on you by? Because I remember backyard wrestling being a movement in like yeah. the late nineties. Yeah. With like bootleg VHSs and DVDs and stuff. So is that what inspired you guys to do this? It, I think it all started around the same. It wasn't because ours wasn't. I mean. It, as any good, decent backyard federation, we had it, the occasional flaming box match with you know, some thumbtacks on the ground. Oh, it's like you put you fucking lit the ring on fire. <laughs> what well, yeah, just, well, yeah, you get cardboard boxes and you light them on fire or whatever. But again, we were also, <laughs> but again, again, let's dial it back on the expectations on that. We were not, we we weren't the crazy like 
people jumping off trailers and literally lighting each other on fire. It was like, oh, we're doing this flaming box thing. We did it in a forest preserve during, when it had snowed in Chicago. Right. And everybody's wearing like 15 layers. It wasn't okay. really like – there was once Poe got burned. It wasn't bad. It wasn't that bad. But he laid in the box too long. And you can hear his opponent say, Jesus, get off the box. <laughs> I, I want to. I just. You know what? I. 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 I I'm gonna rescind my previous statement. I don't want to re- do anything to these. I think they're. They're gonna. Be, they're gonna exist fine on their own. I don't think we need to voice them over at all. No, I don't think we have to do anything to the, the footage. I just think that we have to add this to the checklist of the documentary, which I would call Ken Burns uh, presents Greg Miller's yeah. Psychoses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I just want you to know that Colin, at the end of that really, really, really dark tunnel, we're gonna be changed men. No, absolutely. And I, my, my most, most exciting thing about. Uh, Ken Burns presents Greg Miller Psychosis is that we're going to eventually get a letter from Ken Burns being like, why is my name in the title? <laughs> we have to do the Ken Burns like yeah. photos, but it's just Greg. It's and my, you look, it's like my and old journal. The P is going like, like almost animated right behind his bed. Gross. You went too far. Sorry, guys. That what was your superpower or your special move in a video game? Are oh, we still talking about that? I think we're beyond uh, that. Oh, Greg. we're done it? Yeah, All right, yeah. that's done. All right, yeah. fine. Uh, then it's time for the final topic of the show, ladies and gentlemen. And this one comes from our Patreon supporter, his name is John Lass Lassiter, and he says Lass. And Lass. yes, you're well, you are watching it wrong. You are watching Psych, huh? <laughs> it's a long one, so settle <laughs> in. Here it comes. You ready? His topic is the importance of education for okay. content creators okay. when there is no barrier of entrance. Mm-hmm. Allow me to unpack this a little bit. In your Dynamite crossover episode with Kevin Smith, you talked about just go for it. Go out there, create practice find your audience but as the inadvertent role models that you are what is your stand on education it requires no degree to post a video to youtube facebook etc but i still believe that education is extremely important most of all i think it gives you a wider perspective on life in general and the process itself mastering a craft is an important lesson Mm -hmm. I think all of us best friends love the historical and political aspects that Colin brings to the conversation, and I would think these aspects would be lost had Colin not attended Northeastern. There are, of course, financial aspects to the, of the education in the U.S. that I can't speak my mind on, hence the name Lass. I had that part in. I do, however, realize that it can be a massive burden. Having served in Afghanistan, talking to Americans who were there, quote, doing their time, end quote, to earn a college education. I would love to hear all of your opinions on the topic, especially how mastering the art of shadow boxing propelled mm. Nick's life mm. to a better place. After spending five years in the military myself, I am now a third-year law student at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark, about 18.02 kilometers from New Zealand. Thanks again, <laughs> and heart from Lass. And yes, you're pronouncing it wrong, Lass Thompson. So he's talking about the p- importance of education, a college degree sure. for content creators. Because we talk about just do it. Get out there and make content. I, we do. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm 50-50 on this one. It's easy to go out there and just do it. It's easy to do. There are, You can do anything you want. But there's a difference between doing something and doing something well. Um, and I think that in order to do something well, you do have to have a base of knowledge to some degree. For instance, if you want to go out there and write a story, if you want to do, be a screenwriter, it really does behoove you to uh, learn screenwriting format. And how people, up until this point, have done it. Now, you don't have to do it exactly like them. But they have a a saying in screenwriting is that you need to learn the rules if you want to break them. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, And, and, you know, they they talk about Quentin Tarantino. Well, Quentin Tarantino knew how to write a screenplay. He didn't just write Pulp Fiction, right? He had studied other movies and he didn't go to a traditional university. Uh, Guys like Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith did go to film school. Um, I think he dropped out of film school and came back and decided he's just going to make his film. But he got some sort of knowledge, at least enough to know this isn't for me. This isn't, this isn't where I want to be, or I'm not learning what I need to learn, or I'm not being inspired the way I need to be inspired. Having said that, do I think you need to go to a film school to create, do what we're doing? No, I think you can probably, at this point, um, use YouTube to get, to get the equivalent of the education I got out of my film school, and you could probably do that in about two months. Um, it's different for Colin, and it's different for Greg, where they studied an actual... You guys got a little bit more practical knowledge, Craig, Greg, at least you did, as far, as far as journalism and calling for you for history. You were just studying something that you're passionate about. And there's nothing that I think can ever replace that. If you're going to go and you're in a program that you love and you're learning something and you're around like-minded people, that's going to make you better at everything, no matter what. Um, if you're going to a film school and you don't feel like you're getting anything out of it, no, get out of there. Go get some practical, go, go get some practical experience on a set because at the end of the day, if you want to do something – Reading about it's not going to get you there. You got to go out and you got to go do it, and you got to fail, fail, fail until you succeed. Um, 
But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I often say if I had to do over again, I'd go to a trade school for sure. two years just to learn the basics that I learned basically at the nine years of IGN um, and then go out there and do it. But at the same time, you do have kids coming up that are just picking up cameras and, and making amazing things. Yeah. And the important thing I think we're point to, to point out when we say get out there and do it and make a podcast, I'm not, and I'm saying create content. I'm never saying quit your job, quit school, make content. I'm saying do it in tandem with what you're doing to yeah, get better. That, that extra 12 hours at the end of the day that you have, do something with it. I time. always talk about the fact, right? That like you're making stuff when you first start not to get a million views or whatever, you know, we're still trying to make a million views, not to get a million views, to learn how to do it, right. to get better at it, to grow, to, you know, it's a muscle to train the this muscle to strengthen this muscle mm-hmm. so that you can land on your feet wherever you go and make the content you want to make uh yeah the i looked at my phone there which we're trying not to do anymore because we're trying to be better except for when nick has talked to kevin uh i looked up the guy roger pokorny this is at raj former on twitter uh, a pride of long island like colin moriarty this kid he i ran into him on the internet when he made a video about us leaving ign and it was his podcast and it was him and his co-host talking at the segment about us right turned it on I want to say he's in high school. Sorry if I got that wrong, Raj. And you're watching it, and it's like, holy shit. This guy's awesome. This guy sounds like on a, uh, totally on our level. He could easily drop in. And he's doing in high school while going to high school, while going to school, while looking at college, maybe being in college, and not giving up on that part, right? All he's doing right now is getting the building blocks. Like, Colin always points it out that, you know, if anything, going and getting a degree in college – an undergraduate, right? Or high school maybe it was. Just proves that you can do something. It proves that you can set out and high accomplish school, High school's not hard. Under College is the first thing that people, a lot of people do that's that's hard. Yeah, it's hard. And Ish. that, like, you have to really try. No one, like, like, I'm not saying, I'm not diminishing that high school is difficult when you're there, but it's really not hard in retrospect. College was actually legitimately hard. Yeah. So, like, I think that, um, yeah, my mom always used to say, my mom who's a scholar herself and a very highly educated person who works at a university, used to say, like, undergrad, your undergrad degree is just proof that you can do something. Yeah. For the first time in your life. Like, you never really did anything. Mm-hmm. So, like, this is, like, this is you proving that you can stick with something for four years and leave and sure. have something to show for it. I don't know. My, my whole view on education is that I think it's super important, but I don't think it should be prohibitive. Um yeah, I mean, like you look at, I look at creators that I admire, right? Guys like Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg dropped out of college. Yeah, he didn't finish film school, but he got in there and tried it and started. To f- he understood what where destiny was pulling, where his emotions were yeah, pulling, and, and, what he was going to go. And to. that's the thing that I think I think you're right. And it's, Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard too, and that's yeah. the, that's. But those are think, like, but I don't want people to like be like, well. I'm yeah, in don't Princeton, to, and I'm like, don't like. For don't all go to your mom examples, right now, but like, Colin said to drop out of school. Yeah, don't well, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying like, if you drop it, like, you have to be pretty foolish to drop out of Harvard. You know, like that yeah. was that was a like real what him and Paul Allen did, and all those guys. Like, that's a pretty bold move, you know, mm-hmm. and like that's not going to work out nine out of a hundred times. Yeah, and it's not going to work out the way it worked out for Microsoft. One out of a million times it will work out like that. So like, I'm not saying that like you should do that, but there are a lot of examples of people leaving college or not needing college. That said, like, I fully encourage people to go to college, and I think that. It's just that the, the barrier of entry has lowered itself um, in terms of uh, just producing. You know, I was thinking about it like it was funny in my head when you were talking. I was like, well, the barrier of entry has diminished for what Nick does with film. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, the barrier diminished for what Greg does with journalism. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, but the barrier is this just as low for history. It's like and, and then I realized like, the barrier is just low for everything. Like you can read and write and do yeah. whatever you want, make your videos, make your podcast, do whatever you want for whatever field you want to do it in. But I think that your chances of success, at least commercially, are just demonstrably higher if you stay in college. People as I've talked about in the past, you know, college isn't necessary. And I think that like we have an we have an overemphasis on college. I don't think there's anything wrong with the person not going to college. I don't think there's anything wrong with the person going to a trade school mm-hmm. or learning a trade. In fact, I know dudes back on the island that you know, our air conditioner repairman or do whatever they do. Like they're, they, they lay down carpets, make fucking way more money than, than I'll ever make, you know? So mm-hmm. it's not like, it's not like a, you know, there's a pl- practical application to those kinds of trades, sure. but I don't want people to get caught up in the fact that like, well, you, I don't have to go because the fact of the matter is during it, at the, the depth of the American recession in 2009, the unemployment rate was like 10 or 11%, but for college graduates, it was 4%. And, a, and that's, and that's a loss on a lot of people. Like the, the, the college, the, the, the unemployment rate for college educated people was really low. Yeah. I was like, and, 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 and I was like, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. I don't think it ever got higher than like five, maybe five and a half percent for college mm-hmm. graduates. And that's just because there is a barrier to entry in terms of maybe some more secure jobs or things of this nature. Again, it's, it's an amorphous and kind of nebulous thing, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's necessary, but I do encourage people to, to get an education because I think that college is important. It's a, it's an important social thing it's an important you were talking we talked to, uh, to a gentleman before and you were talking about you know you went to UC Irvine and how it's a commuter school mm-hmm. 
like I was happy that I went to Northeastern because like everyone lived there. Yeah. And like and that was, like that and must that have been was a great experience. For yeah. You. And and that's just an important that was an important social experience mm-hmm. for me. I met all my like all my closest friends from college. I lived yeah. with like Ramon and Kevin and all these guys that we're gonna meet Ramon. as characters on this on this you know in, in the coming months, especially Ramon. Like I met them because of that. I didn't yeah. meet them in class. You know, or anything like that. So it's like, I want people to get that. I can't imagine what I would be like if I didn't spend 17 to 22 in Northeastern. I don't know, like, what I like, what kind of person I would be. Sure. Even though I'm fucking in debt for it. Yeah. And I do encourage people to look and carefully consider the money you're spending. Yeah. Don't go to a private university like Northeastern if you can't afford it or your parents aren't paying for it. Because I, you know, like... Yeah, see, that, and that like, was me. I, I wanted to go to USC. I was like, midway through my freshman year, I was like, I don't want to be a computer science major anymore. I was trying to be a computer science major. I was undeclared. And I took one lab, and I was like, no, I can't do this. I'm not smart enough. I'm not passionate enough to learn this stuff. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. And eventually, I, I found film, and I'm like, I, I should be honest with myself. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, but at that point, I had already screwed my, my GPA over, so transferring to US, to, to like uh, UCLA was impossible. And then trying to get into USC's film school is really, really hard unless you kind of went straight into that. Plus, it's also like $45,000 a year at that time. I think it's probably more now. Um, and I just couldn't I couldn't rationalize that. But I also did not have a defining sense of exactly what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I always envy guys like Tim, and I'm, I wish Tim were here because I think he could speak eloquently toward this, in that he's just sort of grew up and was like, I want to make videos on the internet. I'm a huge fan of this. I want to be a part of that community. I want to be an internet superstar. And I'm just going to do that. And for me, I kind of just... I kind of... Um, just screwed around a lot and didn't really like dedicate myself or devote myself into anything. And I think in that, deg- in that, in that um, sense, college did work for me and that I came in not really passionate about what I wanted to do or knowing what I wanted to do. And I found it and I found myself. And if I'm being honest, I found myself in film and I sat in that first film class and it was, it was I think it was film theory one one. Um, you know, it was a very generic class. Like this is, this is sort of the history of like this film in the twenties and like, uh, you know, um, all those like the Finikista scope and all that stuff and Edward Moybridge and all that you know all, all those all those old stills that you see of the horse jumping and things like that yeah. of like you know how film originated and I was like this is fucking fascinating why haven't I been studying this um, if you know what you want to do and you really really know what you want to do and you're set on it even if that changes you owe it to yourself to go explore that but I think that you can get a, a pretty good base knowledge just with a little bit of education, try it. I mean, if it's if it, two years into it, you're like, I'm not really getting what I want out of this, um, you can always leave. But if you want to go make movies, for instance, um, there's, you know, it's a conundrum because there's no better way to do it than just going out there and doing it. But how do you do it? Well, a great way to, a great way to actually start is to buy, make connections in film school that eventually are going to be the guys that hire you later in life. Um, case in point, I went to school with with a good friend of mine named Ryan. Um, you know. He started Ryan working. Phillippe. No, that'd be awesome if I went to school with Ryan Phillippe. And this is Ryan Creasy, my good friend, uh, who just had a baby. Greasy Congratulations, Ryan buddy. Creasy. Um, but uh, you know, he he and I were, were friends. He was a computer science major. We've been friends since forever, and he was the one that got me the job at IGN. And so, like, because we had that great relationship, because we had kept up in college and we lived together, um, you know that that those kind of relationships that you form, especially that early on when everyone's scared and everyone's looking for an edge in life. Uh, those can be very, very, very important, and those can be lifelong relationships that you guys form. You sure. know, I still talk yep. to Tyroot. Yep. Tyroot and I went to college together. We were fun- we met because of film school, and we I got him a job at IGN, and now, you know, we get to collaborate still, even though we're outside of IGN. You know, we want to get him on the show, and we still talk, and we still hang out. Um, and so that that can be very, very important as far as especially if you're trying to do the traditional mainstream route. As far as barrier to entry for internet video goes, I mean, there's a billion people doing internet video, so I would say how do you, do do what you want to do, but try to figure out a way to have an advantage over other people. And exactly. Obviously, have a plan. Read the YouTube Creator yeah. Playbook. I mean, do your homework on this even. But again, don't do it and like, just quit and bail like like we did. Yeah. We well, I mean, started this and did it for a long time before it became all we do. That's very true. And we had, and you know, I don't, I don't think that ev- like there's never an even playing field. There's never a level playing field. I should say with anything. No one starts off like life is not fair. No one starts off without an advantage and disadvantages, right? We had arguably a pretty good advantage in that we all sort of cut our teeth at a place like IGN, yeah, where we were allowed to fail in an environment that was that was inviting and positive most of the time. I mean, there was always some times when it wasn't it wasn't so great, but that's any business. But for the most part, we were allowed to experiment. We were allowed to do stupid shows like Up at Noon that became a thing, you know, or uh, April Fool's videos and things like that. I was allowed to hire crews with budgets that didn't exist because my boss was cool and was like, here's, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Throw out it. Go rent an Alexa. Go shoot it with this thing. It's just a cool camera. Um, 
but you know that we use that as an advantage to then you know take our passions forward so i would say look for those advantages in life and that advantage can be school sometimes especially if you go to the right department and you meet the right people and you find collaborators who like these guys are cool enough to share this cool experience with you going this journey going forward um because you can't do it by yourself i guarantee even if you're going to do what greg's saying where you come home every day and you want a podcast if you're just by yourself you're going to burn out so fast and i've said it before like i'm fortunate to have you three and i count and now kevin because you guys are the motivation. When I'm when I'm I was tired on Monday and sick and I came in and you were smiling and I was like, All right, I'm back. Then I probably yelled at you a few times. You did, you yelled stupid. at me about some but then I came in today and you were like super happy and I was like, All right, we're all happy again, it's cool. Um I wasn't so yeah. mad at you. I just, no, we're all just I'm gonna that's my new that's my February resolution. I'm not gonna be as mean to you. It's okay. Even in a joking way. You can be mean to me though. I think that I'm nicer I, to you too, I, you I think, fucking dick. I think that like what Nick's saying is like spot on, but I, I think that what people need to realize too is that, you know, the division of labor I think is really important too. For instance, uh, what Nick does for us in terms of the look of the videos, and he doesn't cut so much anymore now. We have Kevin or but he can, he's going to cut our biggest videos. I mean, he cuts the ones that like really need Your hundred pence. Yeah, exactly. That's something that I'm not super convinced that you can learn on your own as effectively as it was being taught to you, but you can learn it on your own. And I think that that is, you know, like for instance, like I... What we do with this business, mm-hmm. I learned nothing in school that helped me for this business. But Nick did. And so you have to like and, – and so like you have to kind of look at it as like what do you want to do specifically and how how best can you educate yourself or prepare yourself for the thing that you want to do? Because we all do different things here. Sure. Like yeah. when we were at IGN and then they gave us an opportunity and I'm thankful for that to be in front of a camera. The fact is that no one ever once came up to me and told me what to do or how to do it. Nope. Ever. Not nope. once. And never like, once. And we never and trained it, anyone. <laughs> no. And I think that like it's – you know like – the first time I was in front of a camera, it's like, do your thing. And I got used to it. And I kind of tried to emulate Greg. And that then, you know, that worked out to a degree. But mm-hmm. then I became my own person and, and kind of Greg's, you know, lieutenant or whatever, where it was like we were just, we worked together. We weren't the same person. We were actually quite different. Um, and that I'm came naturally. That, that, that came that came through experience. Yeah. And so you have to just try to do those things. I think I'm actually really good on camera. But I wasn't. And the fact is that no one taught me anything or gave What's, me any crap, practical knowledge so to funny. get better. It's so funny because I don't remember either of you ever being bad on camera. I'm sure we were at some well, point. Well, it's because there was no bar to set it to. There's no, there was no example of this is good and this is bad. I mean, you figure Damon had a few months lead on everybody, right? And yeah. that's always the funny thing. Everybody always gives IGN shit for, and us obviously as part of that as being offsprings of IGN, is starting videos is what's up, everybody. Yeah. And like everyone, and like that's the same thing. No one trains anybody when you bring somebody in. So everybody <laughs> just starts at what's up, everybody. And everybody's... At tr- I get I get credit for that a lot. That's Damon. Yeah, Damon was the first editor on camera, and he started "What's Up, Everybody." So when you took random editors and put them on camera, and they they were like, "What's no up?" No one told them what to say. They were like, "What's we up?" Were, we were default. emulating each other. That's the point: is that it took time. Yeah, it took a and lot of time. That's a really, 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 really key uh, aspect of all of this. Uh, I heard an interesting thing the other day. I've heard it before, but it resonated with me finally the other day. Uh, where they were talking about, uh, I was watching some report talking about they were they were interviewing an actress. I think it was Emma Stone, or someone like that. Where they had said, um, "Lucille Ball." You know how does it, <laughs> it was definitely Lucy and Desi. No, they were saying, "What does it feel like to be an overnight success?" And oh. she goes, "There's no such thing as an overnight success. I've been acting for 15 years. Like I've been doing going out on auditions, doing small bits. I just now became a part of the public Household consciousness uh, because of this role I had in in Superbad, right? Because." That was the thing. Uh, it might not be Emma Stone, so don't quote me directly on that. But you get the picture in that if you're going to go out there and do it, know that this is a long, long, long road ahead of you. So, A, you better love it. And, B, you better have people around you that are down for this road trip with you. Because if if you don't, it's it's not going to work. And that's not a bad thing. Some things fail. A lot of things fail. I did. I, did, I, mean, I used to have a business before I came to IGN. It totally failed. Didn't what do was well. the business? It was wedding videography. I hated it. Shadow boxing. It wasn't shadow boxing. That, you can't make money on shadow boxing because... You can't capture shadow boxing in a box. Uh, you see what I'm box saying? You box your way right out of it. I see. You just box your way right out of it. I see. All right. Um, but yeah, just so have patience and find a group that you can collaborate with and just keep grinding and set goals for yourself. Um, and that's the other thing with with high with college is that it does teach you to be more goal oriented. Yep. If you're not a person that gets up every day and goes, "We're gonna do this," like Tim is that guy. Tim's like, "Let's go make a video. We're making a video this weekend." And I'm like, "Dude, I don't make a video this weekend." Um, if you're not that kind of person, go to college because college will at least put milestones in front of you that you have to achieve. Yep. And that's very, 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 very important. I was talking to my buddy Brennan and we want to do another short film. We want to try to do a short film for Horror Fest, New York Horror Fest, which is happening next year. Um, Phobia 2. And uh, totally. Uh, Mike Aransky special. And I was talking to him and we both realized we came to the conclusion that we we're like, if we don't have a goal, a deadline for, some, mm, for this thing, never it'll done. never get done. 
So I'm like, the most important thing is having those goals, those little mini milestones that you can put in front of you. And college kind of helps teach you that. You have, you know, uh, midterms. You have, what the hell do they call them at the end of the semester? Final exams. Finals, finals, right? Um, all those things help structure you and, and you can take that forward with you to, to help motivate you in life. Because let me tell you, when you're a content creator, it's all self-motivation. Yep. I mean, this guy is, and no offense to Colin, but this guy is the single most motivated human being I've ever I'm seen. I'm not offended at all. I would be, I would um, say the same thing. <laughs> And like, you know, sometimes I literally like the other day I wanted to pull you aside on Monday, but like or I think it was like Friday, I'm like, dude, are you sure I know you I know that you wanted to go to the uh uh charity event because it was the right thing to do, but I was like, Are you sure you want to go? Because you're fucking dying, man. Like you were tired and I could tell you were burning out. Um, but it's because you love this so much and you are that self motivated person. Whereas I think Colin and I are a little bit more like, let's get the work done and compartmentalize and maybe just kind of watch x files at yeah night, i, I mean i need i mean i need time i mean I, i've always admired i will i'll never be like greg because i i fear the burnout and i've seen it from greg i know greg better than pretty much anyone on this planet and i think that like i've just seen it and you don't want to see it and it's not not that it's a bad thing but it's just like he burns out and i don't want to get to that point where i'm like i just right. fucking don't want to do anything right you know like and so i work really hard as greg knows i get a lot of my work done like at night like just randomly like late at night i'll just yeah. sit at the kitchen table and just start like doing shit um but like I think that to me, one of the things that we haven't touched on, I think is, is, is essential is I, I, for me, I think the, the understanding of doing things for the right reason is important too. The example I give is, um, don't do internet video if that's what you want to do to be famous. Cause I don't think that that's an effective way to go about your business. You know, mm-hmm. you become famous and I'm not saying we're famous cause we're not. But you become famous, you become well known, or you're good at what you do because the people out there like what you do, and that's what's important, you know. And that's the one thing I keep in my mind every day when everyone's like, "Oh, I love you and I appreciate you," and get really nice tweets, and um, you know, you take that stuff for granted and it become easy to get a big head. And I, every day, I, I diminish myself and my own abilities in my own mind to be like, "You're not that great." And, you're no Emma and, Stone. No, I'm not. But I have to tell myself, I'm like, you know what, Colin, you're, you're like, you are lucky. You are blessed, you have a little bit of talent, and you had a lot of luck. And you better fucking never forget that. You know what I mean? And that's what I tell people all the time when they're like, um, man, you're so you know, you're so blessed. You must have been a great writer at 16 or 17 or 18 to get a job at IGN as a freelancer that young and stuff like that. I'm like, hey, listen, I was a good writer. But you know what? It could have been any one of 100 people in yeah. that group of people I was writing with at Game Facts, and it was me. And I, I know that on a, on a Tuesday instead of a Wednesday, they'd have found someone else, and it would have never happened. Yeah. And so I try to keep that stuff in my mind where I'm like, I don't chase fame and I'm not even sure I want it. I just want to make sure that the things that I do resonate with people yeah. as much as possible. And if they're happy, I'm happy. Yeah. And if they're not happy, I'm not happy. And that's basically it because I know that tomorrow it can disappear and you better not get too attached to it. That's you know what I mean? True. And so like, that's, that's the one thing that I try to keep in mind is to do things for the right reasons. I make content, not because not to make content. I do make content because I really do believe that people out there want it. And if there's no market for it, there will be no market for it. And then you don't want to base your self-worth on your own fame or right. your own um, inflated form of ego or whatever, which is why like, I try to be as thankful as possible. I try to be as humble as possible. Like, I, don't, um, I just want people to remember that, that it's easy to get an inflated se- a sense of self-worth because of the things you do if you do a big video or whatever. But man, like, I look at some of the videos we do. I, t- I, t- I talk all the time. I'm like, you know, Tim has a lot more insight into this than I do because he's just a lot smarter with the stuff than I am. But where I'm like... I don't understand why this video didn't do well and this video did do well. And if you mm-hmm. just focus on the video that did, did well and not the video that didn't do well, then you will learn nothing. Right. right. You know what I mean? Right, right, and right. like, and that's, and that's like what, so I'm just trying, like, if you want to be in a store and you want to be an archaeologist, you want to be a writer, you want to be a journalist, you want to be a video creator, you want to like, do it because you love it mm-hmm. and you like to do it. Don't do it because the end result yeah. is a hundred thousand views. Don't do it because the end result is a huge book deal. Don't do it because the end result is you're going to, you know. I just want I, I think context is really important and keeping like kind of yourself in check and your own motives in check is really, really important. Especially don't do it. Don't do what he's saying is don't do it for the money. And don't do it for the money, especially. Do it because you love ad, it. The ad rev on YouTube is go terrible. to school. Yeah, don't. I mean, that's <laughs> what we, I mean, that's what we said. They with, take fifty percent of everything. With the, the, you know, I, I was saying on Colin and Greg live that you know the PAX East panel is a hundred thousand. You know, why we exchange a hundred thousand dollars for a hundred thousand subs, and I think Sunday. it's a really clever, clever name for the panel that Greg came up with. And the fact of the matter is, yeah, like. If we were doing this for fame or for money, we wouldn't have left IGN mm-hmm. because we were more famous with a bigger platform at IGN mm-hmm. and we were making more money. And like that, like when everyone was like, I just, and I was saying like, everyone's like, oh, they made $25,000 each. I'm like, no, <laughs> Greg was making $100,000 a year. Don't blow the panel. 
You know what I mean? And and like and that's giving it away for free over here. And and so like that's the thing. You gotta find the right reasons to do things. Right. There can be happiness found in a little cottage on a mountain somewhere making no money. Like someone can find happiness mm-hmm. there. Like, like there's the, no internet there. It's not fun. I don't know. I just I just want people to keep in mind that like you're gonna try to do things and you're gonna fail at them sometimes and and just that we're self aware enough and aware enough, just generally it's not even self awareness, it is just awareness that we are blessed and lucky because there are a yeah. lot of people a lot better than us doing shit like this that don't get the notoriety we do. And it's because Very of a true. right it's because of a right place, right time kind of luck that you have to just remain grounded. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's really important. I always tell people that like the the reason we work is because like Nick was saying before, and I think the reason we work and we're and we're maybe we're special in this space is because we really are a strong team. And I often think about well, teams win championships, and the the weak like it, it is a, a contrived sports thing. And I played you know hockey, and I know because they say like the weakest link is really the biggest deficit to a team, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so just keep certain things in mind. Stay grounded, like stay disciplined. If you want something, chase it, but chase it for the right reason. Chase it for a love of the game, you yeah, know, not not for the fucking the contract that you're gonna get because you're good at it. Yeah, and I think you know again to to sort of reiterate Greg's point, and we are getting long in this episode, but it's good. It's a good episode. Yeah, go ahead and reiterate the same thing. I already I'm gonna, said. I'm gonna iterate. Long. Should I reiterate? Yeah, reiterate. 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 I'm gonna re-say what you said. Okay. Uh, which is that you know you can do both. You can go to college and you can also create. And and in most instances you should and you should do that. And here's why: because production is really hard. And production, you know, when you start getting up to you know working on commercial work or doing anything that's, that involves travel, you're getting to like 12 to 18 hour days sometimes. If you can't do that now while you're going to school and you can't find time to make a podcast for two hours and figure out how to get it on, on YouTube, you can't find that motivation in you, you're, this is probably not the right thing for you. And that's okay. Is, and yeah. that's okay. And that's, that's, that's fine. But, you know, we used to come over here and start this show at like 8 o'clock at night. And that was hard, man. It's hard. Like I would look over at Greg and Greg would be like off – in a different world, I'm like, it's time to wrap up, Greg. And I'm, I'm sending you the mental, like, hey, man, wrap this segment. And I'm and like, no, like, reiterate the same point. You're like, reiterate the same point. No, I, I think. I, 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 I was going to be nicer to you this month. I don't I mean know. to. It's a joke. I'm um, joking. I love him. You know no, but, but I'm saying, like, and that, that's, that's the thing you guys have to realize is that it, it starts and ends with you. If you if you stop listening to this right now after this episode's done and Greg's done um, pitching all the stuff that he's going to pitch on at the end of it. Um, the rigmarole. And you, you immediately do something that. It, it, t- it takes a positive step toward creating a video or to creating something, then this is probably the right track for you. If you internalize this and go, huh, interesting, and move about your day, that's okay. But Apply to something else. Know that this takes you know a huge amount of self-motivation to do as just all creation, and know that that has to start with you. No one's going to come in and tell you what to do. They're yeah, just I mean, not going to. And that's a great point just in the sense that I think about my own experience at NU when I was there and like how fucking busy I was. And I, I really don't know like where I got it from or how – you know how I found the motivation where like I like everyone was always I remember my friends and a lot of people in college are like I they take the afternoon classes or they start 11 15 or whatever I would take 8 a.m. and 9 15 and 10 30 a.m. classes because I'm like I need to get this shit out of the way you know yeah, what I mean yeah. because then I need to dedicate five or six hours to writing the strategy guide and then oh it's snowing and I need I'm gonna go do snow removal to make money on the side and then I gotta hang out with my girlfriend then I gotta do my homework and all these kinds of things that was my life you know at Northeastern like I worked a lot and like if you have to find that kind of motivation to get your classes out of the way to do all those things. And I still found time to party and I still found time to get fucked up. And I still found time to be like, do all those things that college students do. Yeah. But it was, it was a matter of you have to be motivated and you, and it's, if you want to be a chemist, you have to be motivated. If you want to be a mathematician, you have to be motivated. If you want to be a journalist, you have to be motivated. You want to do this, you have to be motivated. I don't think it's any different. It's just a matter of where you funnel it. And the other important thing to remember, and I think this is really true is that the, the, the old adage is it takes about 10,000 hours of doing something to become really good at it. And, and that's true. And I think about how do we become so good at podcasting? How do we become? Because I think we are. I think we're really yeah. good at podcasting. Greg and I are, especially, you know, Nick's newer and Tim's newer to it. And we're all good. But how did Greg and I as you to become so good at podcasting? To the point where, like, Colin and Greg Live needed literally no, we didn't even talk about the show before it started. It just was what it was and we did it. Well, it was because we fucking did it forever. You know, how did I become good at writing about games? Or how did Greg become good at writing games? Because we did it forever. Mm-hmm. So also be patient with your own limitations. Because when I go back and read some shit that I wrote 10 years ago, it fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and that's just the, I read some stuff that I wrote when I was in high school and college and it's great but I read some stuff where I'm like and so I don't want to like act like I that know, I know, sometimes I know, I'm I know. surprised when I read some stuff I wrote on Game Facts like, oh, I was like 15 I'm like actually this is pretty good uh, but there's some stuff where I'm like man you had no idea what you're talking about what a dumb thing to say what a dumb thing to do why did you structure it like this where's your fucking Oxford comma and like why did you where's the paragraph break and all this kind yep. of stuff it's like and it's the same thing with making film or making video it's like oh, just no. be, be patient with your own limitations yeah. because you're going to run into limitations but you overcome them 
by dedicating the time necessary to overcome them. Yeah, part of the fun of putting things online is that it is they are there forever. That's why the BYWF tapes aren't. Yeah, that's online. what's happening. It's going to happen. No, nah, I don't think we should do that. If Greg doesn't do it, if Greg doesn't do it, I'm going to do it. You no one knows it. where to find them. They're somewhere in the south. It's no. not a very big house. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's the game over, Greggy Show. Each and every week, four, sometimes three best friends gather on this table. Each bring a random topic of discussion for your amusement. If you like that, you can get the whole show early over at youtube.note, patreon.com slash kind of funny. You just go to kind of funny.com. If you don't want to give us any money on Patreon, that's totally okay. Go to youtube.com slash kind of funny. Get the show topic by topic, day by day, until the entire thing's posts on podcast services and youtube.com slash kind of funny each and every Friday. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. It's been fun. I think we've been saying for a long time. You, you know, Colin danced around. He said, you know, the weak link. You know, I think it's clear it was Tim. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was going to be Kevin, but Kevin is holding up his end of the bargain. Here Kevin's destroying. Heavily. Tim over here, though. He's uh, 10 hours into his job, so he's looking good so far. <laughs> What's amazing is I keep, I keep look, going over to, like, reference. Because Tim and I always throw each other looks every yeah. time someone says something ridiculous. And I just lock eyes with this box of tchotchke. Yeah, our giveaway box. for. And Colin really, at the end of the day, you don't even notice it. No. No. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time. It's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs> like, um, I'm trying to think of an example. Like anything, uh, anything with a chorus. Yeah, like just like just any song, any yeah. song like where you'll sing. It's like you ought to know by now. You ought to know by, and then like N- Greg's already singing the next verse, and I'm like, Greg, you have to like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, just like in your head, just think about the way the song sounds and try yeah. to replicate it. You're yeah, not just saying beat. the words. Try to sing on beat. There's no beat. I'm at March to the beat of my own drum. Do indeed, my friend.